ABC Sport presents a national championship conducted by the United States Golf Association. Today from the Marion Golf Club in Ardmore, Pennsylvania, it's the final round of the 81st United States Open Golf Championship. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury, who invite you to see and drive the totally new Lynx by the Continental Insurance Company and their 12,000 agents throughout the U.S. By Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Brewers of Michelob, put a little weekend in your life. And by Goodyear Eagle High Performance Radio, the racing eagles Goodyear tamed for the streets. Here we are at Marion, and here is the leaderboard at this moment. George Burns was not teed off yet with a three-stroke lead over David Graham, four strokes over Bill Rogers, five over Jack Nicholas, Ben Crenshaw, Chichi Rodriguez, and John Schroeder. Some of the other leaders out on the course, the number on the right indicates the number of holes they have played so far. Jerry Payton, John Cook, Tommy Valentine, Sammy Rachel's playing well. The temperature, 84 degrees. It's hot and muggy again here. The sun is shining at the moment. Humidity, 61%, as you see. 30% chance of rain, but it doesn't look like it right now. The fairways of Marion and some of today's pairings. As you see them, that shows also the hole on, on which those particular groups are playing right at the moment. Graham and Burns, it says, on the first, but they have not yet teed off. There is the old stucco clubhouse of Marion, built around a farmhouse that was built in 1824 and which still stands as the central part of the clubhouse. The veranda and the famous terrace where members can actually sit and watch. No eating or drinking this week, however, while the open is on. This is David Graham of Australia in second place. What is strategy for today? Well, I think, Bill, that, you know, if I change my strategy compared to the last three days, I think that could really put me off balance. Uh, I've played the golf course uh, the way I wanted to play it the first three days. I think uh, changing club selection on the tees now after I feel very comfortable uh, playing with the type of clay, you know, particularly holes like, say, seven and eight, uh, ten. The short par fours, I've gone with irons every day off the tee, kept the ball in play. Uh, I don't think the tee shot at Marion is the place to attack the golf course. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, my strategy has been get the ball on the fairway and then when the pins have been easy, then shoot at the flag sticks. Uh, you can't make any birdies out of the rough at Marion, so I, I don't think I'm going to make any changes. Well, Bill Fleming, who talked to David Graham, also had a few words with the man who is leading this championship and will be the last one to tee off on this final day. Here he is, George Burns III. You know, George, I would expect a fellow leading at the end of three rounds of the United States Open would break out in a big smile, but maybe you can't believe it. Well, Bill, it's, uh, it's a heck of a dream for me because I've been playing so poorly lately, and uh, to get away with the kind of round that I had today, and up and down and on the last two greens like I did, it's, uh, I'm very happy about it, but I'm still in a little bit of a shock. I'm wondering if you ever observed the delicateness with which you played a couple of shots today were, is really something to behold. Well, I was telling the press yesterday that uh, I've become familiar with uh, very bad places, uh, you know, to get it up and down out of because I hit them there. But uh, I was very fortunate. I had some good touch around the greens today. The ball stopped. I had some good angles at, my, at the pin. And uh, I made some very good putts. Will you play 11 any differently tomorrow in the final round? Well, you know, that hole has a lot of history to it, and it's been worrying me all week. And uh, I escaped there today with a one-shot mistake. It could have been a three-shot mistake. I'm going to approach it, uh, hopefully, in the fairway tomorrow. And tonight? I'm just going to go jog and have a few beers. <laughs> good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay. So, obviously, that was George Burns talking yesterday to Bill Fleming just after completing his wonderful third round of 68. And now he and David Graham have to have the butterflies, I think. This is Jim McKay, and Dave Marr is beside me, as always. This what would be going through your mind? Referee for this group. You're trying to think about that very first shot. David has a three-wood. George hasn't Denver, picked his Colorado. club yet. Observer is Arthur Rice, a member of the executive John Lopheimer of the USGA making the appropriate announcements here about the officials with them Graham and the players. Dallas, Texas, and George Burns from Boynton Beach, Florida. Mr. Graham has the honor. Play away, please. You notice Graham was announced as being from Dallas, Texas, although he is still an Australian citizen. He's been on the U.S. tour for many years, makes his home in Dallas, former PGA champion, in fact, two years ago.
a little bit different than the uh, tour tournaments, Jim, in that the player that is leading the tournament will hit last. Mm -hmm. Where that's a little bit of a different change than some of the television you've seen earlier in the year. Now this is a par four hole, 358 yards. There's a fairway bunker which Jack Nicholas was in a few minutes ago. He managed to par, however, with the three wood, David Graham. He's looking left. Ball's in the left hand rough, David, and uh, sitting down a little. That's Bob Rosberg out on the fairways, and there is the young man with the flag that marks exactly where the ball is, so the player will know. If you had four caddies like that <laughs> at cl clubs every Saturday <laughs> and Sunday, would speed up play, wouldn't it? It certainly would. Now panning back to where George Burns, the leader in the U.S. Open, is about to tee off. He's never been in any position comparable to this in his life. Not he, very many people ever have, Jim. No. George has just got to go out and hit a lot of fairways, a lot of greens, try to shoot 70, and let the other players try to beat that score. You have it, Rossi? It looks good, Jim. Uh, he played it left to right. It's a little short, but uh, in the right edge of the fairway, which is perfect. Okay, so the two leaders have teed off on the first hole. We're going to be following them again as we did yesterday, literally just about every step of the way. We'll certainly see them play every one of the 18 holes. I said, I'm Jim McKay. This is the new captain of the United States Ryder Cup team, Dave Marr, of whom we're proud for that, as many other reasons, of course. And uh, it should be quite an afternoon. As I said, the weather is much better than yesterday. No serious threat of rain, at least not at the moment. Well, it may be better uh, for the uh, spectators, but not necessarily for the contestants, Jim. It's a lot drier. They tell me the stint meter, which is how you gauge the speed on the greens, which yesterday was a little over 10 feet. Today is 11.4. We'll get to look at, just see how fast 11.4 is as Nicholas bust for birdie at the second hole. First hole, he played out of a fairway bunker to 10 feet and just missed the putt for a birdie. This time... He just misses again. It looks like a rerun of the putt he hit at the first hole. Mm -hmm. You said 11-4 on the stint meter. That is about as fast as you're going to see greens any place, I think. I've only heard of one set of greens faster, and that was at Muirfield this year where Nicholas had him out. He must have had plain dirt. I know it wasn't that, but that was 13 feet they had there. 13 on the stint meter. This is a device invented by a man named Stimson. They named it after him, obviously. Uh, it's very simple. They just roll a ball down a little incline and see how far it goes. Well, you have to wear spikes if they get too fast so you don't slip down, Jim. That's <laughs> <laughs> no question of that. So it's going to be a long afternoon. We think it's going to be a very entertaining and exciting afternoon for you. Already, Isao Aoki, who played so well in the Open last year, very nearly won it, of course, uh, went five under par after ten holes. The last we heard, he had lost uh, another stroke, was back to even par for the championship, but that's the kind of thing that can happen here. Here's the leaderboard, however. Burns by three over Graham. Let's get it set in our minds. By four over Bill Rogers. By five over Jack Nicholas. Ben Crenshaw, who's playing very well. Tied the course record yesterday, remember, with the 64, and he's one under today. Chi-Chi Rodriguez at two under at age 45, and John Schroeder, who almost suffered a two-stroke penalty on Friday, at two under now. Jerry Pate, a former champion. John Cook, a former U.S. amateur champion. Valentine Sammy Rachels coming out of nowhere and doing it very quietly. Jim Thorpe, who led in the first round. One of the young Turks, Curtis Strange, and the big Turk himself, Lon Hinkle. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now David Graham checking his yardages for his second shot. Uh, Bob, how is the lie in the rough? Jim, it's really not very good. Uh, it's kind of in the short rough, but he got a bad break and there's a big clump of grass right behind his ball and it's gonna be very hard to control the shot. I, it, he can't stop it, even Bob, though the greens are pretty soft. Bob, could he run the ball uh, on the green? Or I know he's got that fairway bunker there, but if he carries that, he could run it on the green, couldn't he? Yes, he could run it on the green, Dave, and uh, also the green breaks from right to left coming that way, so if he shot it right at the middle of the green and let it run, I think it'd run right to the flag. I believe George Burns is gonna shoot first. About how long a shot does George have? George is about 120 yards. Uh, I'd say probably a little nine, or if he wants to go after a wedge this early in the round, uh, he can certainly get it there. Let's 
See if he has the touch he had all the way around yesterday. Yeah, good shot. Safely on, Jim. If he could do that eight, uh, 17 more times, he would be this year's Open champion. Par on this course, remember, is 70. It's 36 on the front, but just 34 on the back. Don't let that 34 par on the back fool you. The real terror comes in the last five holes. But all the way around, just in case you weren't with us yesterday, this is one of the most interesting, fascinating golf courses to play that you'll see anywhere. And the more the players are playing it, the more they're finding out that the 6,500-yard course is a real grown-up golf course. Shortest course on which the U.S. Open has played in modern times. Hmm, it is down a bit, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's open rough. That's part of the tournament right there. Okay. He also is safely on the putting surface. A good way from the fabled wicker basket flagsticks of Marion. There are the leaders. There is the story on the right, numerically. And we'll return live. Same to you. We're back live again at Marion. This is the third hole, Jack Nicholas teeing off the distance, 183 yards to an elevated green. Nice catch. I could hear him say nice cut shot, so he's disappointed. Right in the bunker, Jim, on the left side. Bill Fleming reports from the fairways that he's right in the bunker on the left side, not where he wants to be. George Burns on the second hole. First, first. Uh, excuse me, on the first hole. Still at seven under, uh, he has that tap in. Now I'm going to bring in for commentary, our colleague from across the sea, from Great Britain, one of the all-time great players on that island, many-time member of the British Ryder Cup team. Happy to have him with us, as always. Peter Ellis. Peter? Thank you, Jim. And it's a, a glorious day, and I think we're in for a, a veritable feast of golf here today because there are so many permutations about to take place. Will George Burns hold on? Will this man, David Graham, fight through? Can Nicholas do it again? Will somebody jump out of the pack with a 64 or 65? Well, so many permutations. I doubt that because the scoring today is much higher than yesterday. There were 16 players breaking par yesterday. So far, only two out of 22 players have managed to break par. So Merrion being rather testy today as David Graham lines up what you see there for a birdie on the very first hole. Graham in second place on his own at four under par. for a birdie at the second a little trundle down it's sliding right so grave it Graham immediately picks up a stroke Rogers misses an opportunity and there's a lot more to happen Chi -chi Rodriguez there putting his ball down burns back on the first green with this little one for his par four Safely done. Burns remains seven under. Leader now by two. What a good start for David Graham. Not the easiest of lies in the rough. Played it into the center of the green. And then a nice 20 foot putt that just toppled in the hole. Now five under par field are already perhaps beginning to spread out a little bit but still many players in contention anything can happen we've already seen Aoki from Japan or well, certainly for ten holes put together a sparkling round he was really going like a steam engine um, faltered a little bit it's now gone back to two over he is only two under for the day but he was out in 32 and then birdied the tenth on this very difficult day difficult because the greens are much faster the green staff here have really done a superb job. Course is in excellent condition. 
greens are fast, they've been cut and rolled, the fairways are tight. Second hole, long, par five, 535 yards, and a hole that very few people ever reach into or even attempt to reach into. I don't think anyone reached the, uh, the second hole here in the 1971 Open, Peter, and I haven't heard it this way. Because you've got the uh, boundary is a little bit tight on the right side, Ardmore Avenue, and that kind of uh, resists an all-out attack on the hole. David Graham, just two behind the leader, and it's interesting to note as I was driving out this morning with uh, our director Terry Jastro, he was reading one of the local papers and it said that when the Open was first played here, the winning score was 13 over par, then it was uh, 7 over par when Ben Hogan won, and when Nicholas and Trevino tied, it was level par, so more or less on the law of averages, it should be 7 under par today. But interesting to note that David Graham is not quite sure what to play from the tee. This is what he was speaking about earlier. It's this giant game of plotting and mathematical chess, how to progress his way up this hole, which is very difficult. It goes in little segments. Operation one, get the ball on the fairway, hopefully 215, 220 yards away, then up the fairway. The green is angled slightly left. He's decided with a little bit of wind, he needs a little bit more than that one or a two iron. So now it looks like a fairly shallow faced wood, perhaps a three wood. Graham of the square shoulders, high wrists, rounded swing. Brexit it away. Position A. And now it'll be George Burns, the leader of the championship. George, great big powerful man. Had a few ins and outs yesterday, but my word, he kept things going very well, and he's elected to hit his big iron. Big George. Plenty of movement with the body and the arms. Just keep his head still and hit it with the club head. And no, that is not good news. George did that a couple of times yesterday. Took an iron from the tee and missed the fairway. And then when you're, when you're sacrificing distance for so-called direction, you can be in problems. Jack Nicholas in the bunker at the first, now in the bunker at the third, opened up with two pars, might have been two birdies, second shot at the long, short, third hole. Eight, nine footer for a par. There's the par, outward nine, 36. Two par fives in the first four holes, the opening Six or seven holes here are long. Then there's an interesting little bit in the middle and then a very tough ending. Marion, in my book, one of the delights in golf. We'll be back in a moment. Interesting pairing. Chi Chi, always colorful, age 45, having one of the great tournaments of his life. This hole was bogeyed by both Jack Nicklaus and his playing companion of the day, John Schroeder. Chi Chi. Quick on the trigger, Jim. See where they finished. I, I can't see where it is, but it seemed to be disappointing. Just a little short of the green is the word. For Chi Chi Rodriguez, who is two under par and in a tie for fourth place with Ben Crenshaw and John Schroeder and Sammy Rachels. Jack Nicholas had dropped back to one under par. So he's six strokes out of the lead. Now Bill Rogers, young touring professional, at the point that Chi Chi was maybe 20 years ago. Good player, Jim. Real mm -hmm. straight, left to right where the flag is. This is the kind of shot Bill should be able to play. Somebody fade. say fade. All right, left side of the green, left rear of the green. A long way from the flagstick, as you can see. 
Here comes Gigi. He's just having a marvelous time these these four days of the U.S. Open. Interestingly, he he said in an interview the day before the tournament started, and he wasn't kidding this time. He said, "I really believe I have a chance to win the U.S. Open. I've never played as well in my life as I am right now." And so it's turned out. Well, so they move down to the third green, and we're going to have an observation now from our colleague Peter Alice. Well, since play ended here yesterday, two questions have been uppermost on many people's mouths. Who's going to win? Can George Burns hang on? And what do I personally think of Merrion? Well, of course, George Burns can hang on. Andy North did just that. Equally so, the championship has been dramatically lost over the last few holes and won over the last few holes in recent years. So that is that. What do I think of Merrion? I think it's absolutely superb. Small, in this case, certainly is beautiful. Many greens are close to tees. The spectators have been limited to 18 and a half thousand a day. A complete sellout each day. The course in beautiful condition. The ground staff have done wonders. And Merion, for me, must be preserved because it's like saying we must do away with five and six hundred seater theatres because the Richard Burtons or the Lawrence Olivia's won't come and perform in such a small arena. So Merion must be saved. A man who I'm sure would agree with that is the assistant director of the USGA, Frank Hannigan, whose laryngitis is a little bit better today. Frank, many Many interesting things have happened over the last uh, three days. If George Burns does hang on to win this great championship, he must remember the 11th hole. He played that second shot behind the grandstand, and many people think that that was one of the greatest breaks in golf. Now, why was the grandstand there? Why was it a great break? And what was the ruling? Well, the grandstand was there because it never occurred to anyone uh, that a player of that class would hit a ball in that position. But golf balls tend to go in funny places, especially out of lush four-inch rough. Now, the ruling uh, turned on something called a temporary immovable obstruction, which a grandstand is, which a scoreboard is, which a concession stand is. When a ball is behind one of those things on the player's line to the hole, he's entitled to line of sight relief. He can pick it up without penalty, move it to the nearest side, take one club length more, and then play on. And that's what Burns did. Let's go out to live golf. And to George Burns again. Now, he's hit his second shot from that deep rough on the left side of the fairway. Now he's on the right side. Looks like he might have been flirting without a bounds there, Bob, was he? Well, he had to knock the ball a little right, Jim, because he couldn't get it over that bunker out of the lie he had. He not only had a bad lie, but he was on an upslope, and he, it tends to shoot the ball straight up in the air, and this hole's playing right against the wind today. He doesn't have too good a lie. It's, it's sitting kind of dry, which is an advantage, but it is sitting down. He has a shot of about 155 yards into a pretty good breeze. And this, of course, is a par five hole, 535 yards in length. There's the ball. So the leader has his first problem of the day. He played the first hole very efficiently for what is often called a routine par, if there is such a thing. <laughs> Not when you're leading. <laughs> That's the first of his many problems today. Went at it almost gently, it appeared. There it is. Off the right side, just off the edge. Might well be able to get down from there. Not a bad shot. Nope. So he really has extricated himself well from a quite bad tee shot. Here's David Graham preparing for his third shot on the par five hole. Bob, how long a shot does, he ha does David have in there? David played a real good iron. Uh, up to about, oh, I'd say 90 or 95 yards from the hole. But again, he's slightly uphill lie and uh, into a, a breeze that it seems to get a little stiffer as you get up toward the green, as you get up on higher ground. I would think that he'd probably play a little nine or, or maybe a big wedge if he, if he has the right kind of lie. Yeah, take a little courage to fly it all the way back. They are, you were right, though. They are holding very well. If the first hole was any indication on David's shot. Bill Rogers with a birdie attempt on the third hole. Remember the par three where Chi Chi was short with his tee shot. Rogers was very long and leftish with his. Here it is coming down. Look at that. Look at that break. Look at that speed. And still quite a distance from the hole. Now David Graham. before David that David Graham is very much a streak player. We saw him do it in the PGA Championship two years ago and go on to win in that dramatic playoff with Ben Crenshaw. And if he's got it going, look out. Not only streak, but he's a very tough player too. When he gets going, George is going to have to do something to turn him off a little bit. 
We birdie the first hole, and here's another look at this marvelous third shot on the second. Just marvelous. Look at this. Well, one would expect he would make that, although it's not a tap in. He's got a little, little bit of a putt there. But if he makes four, and even if Burns makes five, getting down two from where he is, the lead will have shrunk from three to one in two holes. A very good illustration of why it's so important that we're now able to cover all 18 holes of the U.S. Open. They so often, uh, somebody might seize the lead here. You know, uh, Burns could have started off with two or three birdies in a row and wrapped up the tournament to all uh, intents and purposes. On the other hand, what's really happening is it's tightening up. And we're seeing it happen. In a way, this uh, course, it can't be good that uh, David may pick up a couple of shots on George here, but this ought to wake George up. Now, hey, I'm in a dog fight out here. I had a three shot lead. That was only five minutes ago. What happened? And, and he's playing all right. I mean, at least the one hole he's played OK. He's got to get this down in two, Jim, or he has a chance of being even standing on the third tee. And that would be a little shock to your nervous system. When you talk about the determination and toughness of David Graham, I always think of what he said to Bill Fleming in the interview he had on the air at the PGA Championship a couple of years ago that when he was a, a teenager and wanted to leave school to become a golfer, his father said, if you do that, I will never speak to you again. And David said, Bill, I must say that he's kept his word for 15 years. It's a sad story, but it is an illustration of, of the man's determination. George's nerves, and it came up okay. Now David Graham will have this short one for a birdie that could bring him within one stroke of the lead with 16 holes to go. I think Peter commented on the fact that the first six holes here are long. It's a short golf course, the shortest, as we said, on which the Open is played these days. But the first six are long. Okay. Two birdies in a row for David Graham. Then the middle holes are really very short, a lot of short par fours. And then comes the final five, sheer terror and the quarry, of which more later. Any hole can get you, though, Jim. The short holes, seven, eight, mm. nine, ten, they're, they're, they can be tough. A very good tough par five. For the, for the he now only leads by one. Now, we're going to take a break, and when we come back from that, you're going to hear the first of several messages you'll be hearing during the course of the day from the United States Golf Association itself. There's the third green, par three, 183 yards. And on the tee, David Graham, who's made a sensational start. Two birdies in the first two holes. You can't do better than that. There he is, looking very cool and calm. Racking it through. Cries of admiration. Safely on. The flag, as you can see, is way on the other side of the green. And you've got to be either very courageous or rather foolish or a bit cavalier to go straight at the pin. And Graham with two birdies in the first two holes safely on. George Burns has parred the first two holes. And if he keeps doing that, well, it'll be a very good round indeed. There you get some idea how tight that flag is to the bunker. Go back to the tee, which is slightly below the level of the green. We're using a four iron, three iron, four iron, five iron yesterday for the mighty hitters. That sort of club today, but I suspect a longish iron. They have pulled that away. It looked to be a, like he'd pull it. Yes, just up the left side, safely done. Both of them on the wide part of the green quite away from the flag though as you can see Ooh. 
have another look at George, this big man, the leader of the championship. You can see all sorts of interesting movements here from George as he settles into this shot. As Dave Meyer was saying yesterday, he's got the, the high-flying right elbow at the top of the backswing, which is not in all the there, which is not in most of the books, but he gets through it well. He keeps his left wrist going through the ball pretty well. Jack Nicholas for a birdie at the fourth. Creeping down that right shoulder. Altered his stance and again a little today. Can he do it? Needs one. No. Missed one on the last hole for a par. Missed that one. And, well, much can happen yet, of course. But uh, Nicholas's record of second, thirds, fourth is, is quite extraordinary without his many victories. And Jack has to settle for a par five. Three pars and a one over. Well, Nicholas not making any move yet. That's how they stand. Burns now just one ahead of David Graham. Crenshaw has had a birdie. And all these players within striking range, if they can pop a few putts in. Ben Crenshaw, fifth hole third shot. Crenshaw who played that marvellous round yesterday, 64. Can he do it again? Well, that would be asking a lot, but he's capable of anything and he'd love to win. chip up to the fifth green this green is really tilted Peter you'll see it break down to his left very sharply toward a creek there you are there you get some idea of the slope Frank Hannigan was telling you about and the greens much faster today it's like a game of bowls or curling I just swing it out and put the bias on. Look at this one start to turn. Is the pace right? Is the speed okay? Could have done with a touch more, but that's good effort. Ben Crenshaw playing with Jim Thorpe. Back to the third. David Graham first to putt quite a way away. He's made a very good start, and I think uh, he may well be mindful of the words of the great South African player, Bobby Locke, who used to say, when playing courses as difficult as Marion, you just play for pars, you get a birdie, you tuck it away in your back pocket and go to the next hole and try and get another par. Don't waste shots. He's a long way away. If he's really thinking with a cool head, he'll be thinking now, just good pace. Put it into that water barrel. Just roll it down there. Get a three. Just look where he aimed that. So he's overborrowed. It's turning in. No, he hasn't overborrowed. Swings a bit late. So there was a six or seven foot swing on that putt. Very well judged indeed. Here's Bill Rogers at the fourth hole, his third shot. This monster 600 yard par five. The flag is very much in the front of the green and Rogers stops it beautifully. Leaves him an awkward putt down the green, but a chance for a birdie. leader George Burns at the third mm, 
testing putt left. Gary Player, one of the world's greatest, finishing his round at the 18th, six over par. Six over par, two, eight, six. With a very good score player, a couple of 71s and a couple of 72s. And what events has he not won in the world of golf? Marvellous golfing character. Back to Burns, and my word, how that ball trundled on. Now he's got this to hold to stay just one ahead of David Graham, and not the easiest of putts. Just the sort of putt you don't want to be left with. One has to say that if uh, if Burns could get round the course in par 70, uh, nobody could accuse him of uh, making too many mistakes. And then if somebody took the title away from him, well, good luck to them. I think even if he takes 72 or 73 under these conditions, it will be a very good score indeed. Because the par here of 70 is mighty tough. Only two players out of 28 who have so far completed the course have broken par today. Burns then for a three. This to remain one ahead of David Graham. Bravely done. Very bravely done indeed, and just the little bit of tonic that he needed. On to the fourth. But prior to that, of course, David Graham, who marked his, has this little 18-inch putt for his par. This man doesn't do too many things in a careless way. Let's look at the time and the trouble he's taking over this. Not being slow, just being careful. This could count for everything. Good three. Good putt from Burns, good opening from Graham. Uh, Rogers for a birdie at the fourth. Chichi Rodriguez, who's having a great run in this championship, has already got a birdie four. Now can Bill match it? That's a par five. Rogers remains three under. Level now with Chichi, who's creeping ever nearer to the leaders. So, Burns leads the way, but now only by one stroke. Chichi Rodriguez is there, Bill Rogers, Crenshaw, many others. We'll be back. Back again at Marion, where George Burns leads by a single stroke in the final round of the United States Open Golf Championship over David Graham. Look at Chichi Rodriguez at age 45, now tied for third place with his playing companion of the day, Bill Rogers. Four strokes off the lead, but with a long way to go. Ben Crenshaw at 200 after his round of 64 yesterday to tie the course record. And there, the others. Jim Thorpe, the first day leader, has fallen back to even. Jack Nicholas at one under par is for the tournament, is one over for the day. Now, just a matter of seconds ago, Bill Rogers hit this tee shot on the fifth hole, a fascinating hole. Everything falls away to the left, and on the left, the entire length of the hole is Cobbs Creek, which wanders its way all through this golf course. And Bill got a good result. You want to stay on the right side of this one, Dave, all the way, right? Well, uh, actually, Jim, if you were on the left side, you'd have a better second shot into the flag. But uh, if you go down the left side, you've got a lot of problems concerning the creek. John Schroeder playing with Jack Nicholas with his third shot on the fifth hole, par four of 426 yards. It's the same hole that they, Rogers and Chi-Chi, just teed off on. And this green will break from right to left on you a little bit. Won't oh, it? if you get to the right side on your second shot, and uh, you, you're very slick going down the hill. John's ball didn't roll near as fast as he thought it was going to. 
Schroeder is still tied with Nicholas. Both of them one over for the day, one under for the championship. Time to get going if they're going to make any kind of move. You can't That's right. get too many behind. Six off the lead at the moment is Jack Nicholas trying for an unprecedented fifth United States Open Championship, having won his fourth last year. You'll get some idea with Jack's putt. You get to watch it just how slick it is going down this hill here. This is a virtual stint meter all to itself. <laughs> That's right. Of course, he knows it. And if you had a man uh, has a nice slow stroke, I think that's one reason that Jack has played so well through the years in major championships. He's got a very slow, smooth putting stroke, which is what you need when the greens are very slick. Show me a man with a fast stroke, and I'll show you a man <laughs> watching on Saturday and Sunday. That's right. Jack has a nice Father's Day present today. His son, Jack Jr., is carrying his bag. Very deliberate as always. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, hold that. He holds it. If that didn't hit the hole, Jim, it might be off the green. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's missed two short putts, so keep trying when you play golf. You never know when the hole might get in the way of that thing. You could, you could put that as a lower third, as we say in television. A superimposition on Jack, right? Keep trying. Because he never stops. Never stop. You'd like to have that chopped up into six footers, though. You could really use them later on. Now the leader, George Burns, on the big par five, the 600-yard par five. This is his second shot now. Seve Ballesteros went for it and made it today. Well, he did too, is. but that's the first I've heard of. George would be foolish to try it. In his position, it's an iron shot. It doesn't play 600 yards because you're going downhill. And the idea is just to put the shot in the fairway. All you're going to have is a pitching wedge. I say all you're going to have across Cobbs Creek again. Well, that's the point. As you can see, Cobbs Creek runs right in front of the green in somewhat the fashion that the Swilkin Burn does on the first hole at the old course of St. Andrews. David Graham playing with Burns, remember, in one shot behind him. Really has a soft, pretty looking swing. It's very, it's, he's moving though. It may look that way, but a good golf swing. Okay, they're very close together there. A look at the gallery around them, and now another look at that putt of Jack Nicholas. When I said hold it, hold it, I meant to stop because it was going so fast. But in the end, he hold it. That's, that's right. Watch this now. Oh, whoa. You can see him going, whoa. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> well, he knows that in that was the hole. He may be chipping back. At age 41, he liked that one just as much as he would have at 18. Bill Rogers with his second shot on the par five. Remember Cobbs Creek going along the left. It's the same creek that goes in front of the fifth green. It's all over the place on that side of Ardmore Avenue. You've got to start this ball to the right, Jim. The green, as you have pointed out, slopes very much from right to left here. We're told he has a three iron. Walks away from it. You can hear him say, I've got to get it up there, don't I? It's Texarkana for, is this enough club? <laughs> Roger is 29 years old. He is really a fan. Plays a lot of good shots the last two days. Just hasn't putted or hadn't made the putts that looked like that might get him over the hump a little bit. He's won a tournament this year, the Heritage Classic. Played on one of the better courses that the tour plays on. That's good. In a way, might remind you of Marion in that it's uh, one of the shorter courses. He leaves it short. After having said, I've got to get it up there, don't I? Now, pretty tough little pitch there. Jack Nicholas now moving to the sixth hole, which is 420 yard par four. Now, this is the last of the long par fours until you get to 14. Coming up are par fours of 350 yards, 360 yards, 312 yards, 370 yards. But they're all you can handle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's what makes it interesting. A little bit of a tough drive here in that the landing area, you can't see it from the tee. Hard to line up 
exactly. You must make your mind up where to hit it. Always keeps the player a little unsure. Out of bounds to the right also, and that's a very fine drive. Okay. Jack Nichols on hole number six, coming off a birdie that brings him back to even par for the day. Two under for the championship, five strokes out of the lead. Again, the weather, if you've just joined us, is uh, it's, it's muggy, but it's a hot summer day. It's, it's appropriate for the 21st of June. Now, Chichi Rodriguez at three under, tied for third place with his second shot on the fifth, playing with Bill Rogers. She's trying to run this in from right to left. Oh, mm, and he did. And a little unlucky there. If that was about a foot farther. Watch this ball move, Jim. Look, Can look, you imagine look. what Nicholas's ball oh, would have done goodness. if it had missed the green? I mean, missed the hole a minute ago? Cobbs Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. David well, up Graham. Up the creek for sure. Mm -hmm. David Graham with his third shot over Cobbs Creek to the fifth green, the par. The fourth green, the par five, 600 yards in length. This is really a test of your of your nerve too, Jim. A little bit downhill, your your line's a little bit downhill. You you want to try to get it close to the hole, and yet you've got to make sure you get over the creek. And the flag stick way up front today. Oh. Snug. Whoa. Not bad. They give George a little breathing room there, but of course George can't afford to get too cute either. David looks as though he's 15 or 20 feet by the hole. Now George Burns, the leader by one, led by three when the day began. Is it in the creek or not? It may well be in Cobb's Creek. Rossi, can you see? We're told it's not in the creek. Bob when, Rothberg, when you get there, let us know what the what the deal is. I believe the ball stayed on the bank. Uh, well, how long is the grass there? Is it that real long stuff? Well, it's not good because he has such a short shot to play that uh, it's almost impossible to hit it hard enough to get it out of the grass and, and then stop it in such a short time. He, plus, he's going downwind. Walking with him, Will Nicholson. They're just moving out of the picture. President of the USGA. Arthur Rice. All right. Well, well, it just shows you the simplest shots that appear to be simple if you just don't carry it far enough. Well, the pin placement's the key thing in this hole today, isn't it? He had to play. He wanted to get close very snugly, and uh, that's hard to do. Well, you flirt with the... Tend to ease up on those, huh? There it is. Obviously did hit it as hard as he should have. Boy, it was not far from going into Cobbs Creek, I'll tell you that. Well, Lyad didn't look too bad. Maybe he can played such two great pitches yesterday at the at the 17th and 18th hole, making par there. Well, it's time for one of those kinds of shots that win the U.S. Open. It isn't so much the birdies as the pars you save. <laughs> the calamities you escape. That's right. George was uh, was pointing uh, toward the ground because I think he was asking where the uh, line was that defines the margin of the water hazard there. It's, it's indicated by a yellow line. And, uh, I can't tell whether he's in or out. And of course, if he's within that line, he cannot ground his club. If, if he's without, he can. I suppose he's right on the line, Frank. Frank Hannigan. Then he's in the hazard. Okay. If the ball touches the line at all, is that it? Exactly. Okay. That's a good point for the people at home to know whether you're in or out. Oh, you've heard those arguments, haven't you? Oh. can't be out. I'm right on the line. <laughs> it's too close to call. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No chuckling from George Burns right now. Well, he's got a long day ahead of him, Jim. Win or lose. David Graham will spend this extra time surveying his situation. Well, he's away. Oh, he's away. He's actually going to putt, yeah. It, it, it's not who's furthest away on the green. It's simply who's furthest away. That is the custom. Putting for a birdie. 
with the possibility of a birdie, let's say. He's longer than 15 or 20 that I said first, it looks like. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a good putt. Jack Nicholas, second shot on the sixth hole. Remember, a long par four, 420 yards. Hey, he said it way left, Jim. Yeah, but it kicked right on. You can't tell exactly where it went to uh, on the greens. We've got area up there, but perhaps you can see it better than I can. Yes, we can, Bill. He hit on the left fringe and kicked right on the green in beautiful position. Oh. Didn't avoid the bunker by too much, but I think he did what he wanted to do. He got it close, and that's, that's no matter how you do it, you're going to take that. Now Burns with the trouble shot. I'm told that he is in the hazard, so he may not ground that club. Okay. These can be tough shots, Jim, because your weight tends to be on your back foot. Oh, look at this. Look, look at that play. Your weight tends to be on your right foot then when you're playing that shot because his left foot is up the hill. And a lot of the times you hit that ball a little heavy when you do that. On any kind of little shot around the green, try to keep your weight on your left side. A good shot, of course, but he still left himself a pretty testing putt for the par five. Well, he made a nice putt the last hole, the mm -hmm. two putt on the par three. So sometimes it helps when you make one right away and you get a little touch, a little confidence. Remember, he's leading by one over David Graham, by four over Bill Rogers. And now Chi Chi has lost a stroke, so. It's just Bill Rogers in third place, as you saw. Teeing up on the sixth hole, the 420 yard par four. Number Nicholas is on the green here, the Schroeder. That's perfect. Yep, just fine. If you wanted to watch someone drive a golf ball and play, uh, Bill Rogers would be one to really watch, Jim. He's a good player to watch. Now the necessary par putt for George Burns. Right. Oh, we have a tie for the lead. That is pending. I don't believe Graham has putted out yet. He may have. No, he didn't, no, as he a matter has. of fact, but he has a very short putt. That's the same side that uh, Nicholas missed it on, same side that Bill Rogers missed it on. That putt has to look like it goes left because all three putts that we've seen there, the players have missed on the right side of the hole. Well, it becomes as long a day for David Graham, too, when you pull into a tie. He's not, all the pressure's just not on George. That's right. You will share the pressure now, sir, if you make the putt. for the lead in the U.S. Open. And David Graham, and we'll be back. David Graham, tee shot at this great fifth hole. for a birdie at the sixth. Leads it and gets it. He's on the move, is Jolly Jack, and you could bet your life savings he's certainly going to finish in the top five or six. And he really is truly remarkable. Two birdies in a row. Touch of good fortune about one, not about the second. Now George Burns, 50. Beautiful looking drive here. And long. Hey. Of Bob Rosberg down there on the fairways, and that's the green they're coming to. There you can see Cobbs Creek, not too far off the green on the left hand side. Everything's sloping towards the water. Now Burns and Graham tied at six under. Nicholas with that birdie moving rather ominously into position, tied with Bill Rogers. Chi has dropped a stroke, took three from the front of this green. Now two under, Crenshaw, after that marvelous round yesterday, playing very smoothly today. And Sam Reckles there, two under par, which is very good also. 
crowd on the hill looking down on this fifth hole which isn't all that long 426 yards but a real gem here's Bill Rogers sixth fairway you can see with a wooden club this hole 420 yards bit of breeze about very straight up and down the line but he just turned on that one not too far from the flag as you can see no more than 12 or 14 paces he just pulled it away and he's on the back slope of the bunker I think and may be faced with one of the most difficult shots in golf fifth hole they're the leaders Graham and Burns and uh, let's have a look at this fifth hole in in more detail 426 yards par four everything slopes right to left there's the creek going up the left hand side must drive there that's the players view of it you can see the tilt from right to left swing slightly round the corner there's that little creek doesn't look much but so many balls look good and just bounce in there's the green tilted also from right to look at that ball swing away on the left our two-dimensional cameras tend to flatten everything out but there you saw a ball looking straight falling away and that's from our high camera lovely picture over this delightful bit of pennsylvania countryside trees and greenery good crowds happy crowds which is nice at any sporting event nowadays the temperatures in the mid 80s humidity is around about 62 or 3 percent a lot of good golf and much excitement to come this is the hardest hole on the front nine peter no doubt about it. it's played that way in relation to par this week for the entire field is there any sort of uh, statistical reason, apart from statistics, why that should be there, Frank? Is it because it, it doesn't appear? Is it psychologically more frightening for them? Do you think? Oh, I think the I think the the cant of the green makes it that hard. Yeah. Well, that's the view that David Graham has. what club made the selection he can afford to play it a little bit to the right and use the slope to get close to the flag you'll see Graham's ball start to the right Graham very much a right to left player that's caused by his rounded swing always seemingly playing that forearm drive at tennis the right forearm drive at table tennis just watch him sweep round rather scything action now there fights to keep it up and now hopes it's coming back again as he left it too far out to the right oh what a nice bounce he got the turn on it just right and got a little bit of a fortunate bounce and the slope did the rest and now he's got a putt for a three Rogers now sixth and he in fact did stay on the down slope of the back of the bunker very difficult shot virtually impossible that is a very fine shot indeed we might have given him another 10 or 12 goes and he might have got it a bit nearer but that was a very well executed shot George Burns second to the fifth just give that a wipe Testing the breeze. Now that's a good view of uh, what George has to do. Fairway sloping, he's got a six iron. George again tends to draw the ball in a bit from right to left. Fights against it, you'll see how he tries to keep the blade open. Uh, all through the ball. Ground sloping away. May well be hitting a big seven. May have changed his mind. It's a six or a seven. Now then, has he got it online? Will it hold? Will it turn? 
Oh, marvellous shot. Look at the speed, though. Look at those greens. The ball moving under its own weight off the green. Now, some may say that's almost too difficult, and some may say, well, that's golf. Great shot from Burns. Burns and Graham still tied, three strokes ahead of Nicholas and Rogers. John Cook still there playing very nicely. And Frank Connor, man I've watched over the years, still battling away. Now John Schroeder playing with Jack Nicholas. Seventh hole, 350 yards. Two over par today, level for the championship. Now, has he got the old Cobras working? Has he done it? He right to the looks to have played a good one. Here's Jack Nicholas. Bill Fleming's been following this group, so we'll just let Bill talk us through this second shot and give us some observations on how Jack's warming to his task. Well, I think the thing that really did it for him, uh, obviously, was that great 45 or 50 foot putt on the uh, fifth hole. Then he followed it with a birdie at six, and he hit a great one iron off the uh, seventh tee, just as a, oh, 110 yards to feather it in here to the seventh. Look at this. And feather it in, he did, no more than nine, ten feet away. And a chance for another birdie. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot from Nicholas. And things are warming up. George Burns just off the green at the fifth. Now, whose shot is it first? George backs away, has a look. Well, it could be you, David. No. Before they putt, we're going to have a look at Bill Rogers. Sixth hole. Rogers for a three. For a four, beg your pardon. And has he done it? No. So after that very difficult bunker shot, Rogers drops a stroke, goes back to two under par. The fifth. Would you leave the flag stick in, Peter? I think it all depends on whether the, uh, the flags are receptive. And I think basically the American flag sticks tend to be more receptive than many of the uh, ones on the continent, which sometimes are old bamboo poles, converted telegraph poles, bits of iron, old sleeper ties, railway lines, and so on, because we're not quite as uh, sophisticated as you. But I think I would, I think I, on balance, I've seen more balls kept out by hitting the flags than have been caressed in. So perhaps George is doing the right thing. I think he, uh, well, it was a little bit tentative. And he's still got an awkward little putt. Um, that was uphill and a little bit to do. I think with golf, you, you, it's a degrees of concentration. Here's uh, Bill Rogers, one iron. Seventh, tee shot, and that's perfect. Position A. Back to David Graham. There has been some comment about uh, the length of this course, and uh, with championship courses growing to 7,000, 7,100 yards in length, some people think that it's almost unfair that you should have a course where you've got to use two and three irons off the tee, but I, I disagree. That's the examination paper set for the week. And if you're a player, you get on with your mathematical task and you do the best you can. And uh, here's a man who's doing the very best he can. David Graham tied for the lead, putting for a three at the fifth. Little tap down the hill. Nicholas, remember, hold a monster here. Now look at that, that was half the pace. Dear old Fletcher's trolley. There it goes, trundling away. It's like a marble on a bit of linoleum. Away it goes, nothing to hold it. 
and just look at that now Jack what a chance for him a birdie putt at the Nick, seventh Nick. this for a three no nope. needed that one mind you he's had a couple of good ones but and you can't hold them all but he just uh, has a word with Jack Jr. no he doesn't it's John Schroeder Well, Jack with a little awkward putt, and uh, he'll have many thoughts to think about, and he must have had many before he started out this final round. I'm kind of looking forward to the last round. I know I've got to play a good round of golf if I want to win the golf tournament. Uh, I don't know what George will do, uh, and I can't really worry about what George will do. If George plays a good round, he's going to win the golf tournament. I think a fellow who's leading the tournament by three shots and plays a good round should win. Uh, but uh, if I put some good numbers on the board and George happens to slip, I want to be there. So that's uh, that, that's my just my objective, just play a good round of golf. I would think of all the golf courses that the U.S. Open has played on, this one might afford a person who has five strokes back an opportunity to win. I think you can, I think you could win from even further back under these conditions here. Well, we'll see. Now, David Graham, having had a putt for a three, unbelievably has this for a four, and gets it. Oh, he doesn't get it. Oh, uh, would you believe it? He was no more than 18 feet away, gave it a little run at the hole, and almost went the same distance past. And that is a stroke drop, and as Jack Nichols was saying, shots can change here so rapidly, so quickly. Sometimes through no fault of your own, really. Now, George has this for a four, when it looked as if Graham was in the driving seat, so it's Burns for a four on the left, Jack for a four on the right. Jack, who makes little slight alterations to this very personal putting style of his. Feet a little bit closer than they were in the first two rounds, but that right arm like a piston. Nose sniffing at the ball. Slow stroke. The old trusty putter. Doesn't do it this time. That's two small ones. Nicholas has missed a putt for a three from no more than eight or ten feet three putts for Nicholas and he cannot afford to do that and if Jack loses this championship by one or two strokes at the end of this day he'll have plenty to tell the family when they get round the old campfire tonight what might have been three putts from no more and Jack closes his eyes and has four deep breaths and Young Jack thinks I better keep out of the way for a few seconds. Burns then, ahead by one suddenly. And it looked as if he might suddenly lose his lead. Still, it's four ahead of Nicholas. All these other tigers there snapping at his heels. Over they go to the sixth. Good hole, the six, 420 yards. There it is. Bunkers up the left, plenty of trees. Nice hole. The pace of the greens have really taken their toll so far, and we've seen a couple of perfect uh, examples of that in the last 10 minutes. Peter, now this is where it's hard for Burns. He uh, certainly, if there's a weakness in his game, he's, it's driving accuracy. You know, they keep statistics on our professional tour. He's 111th out of 146 players in terms of driving the ball into the fairway. Well, George, you better smarten up your driving. to have hit it very well and very solidly but he's pulled it a little has he no he hasn't fine drive oh, David Graham the most careful of players and there's a nice hairdo behind there looks like an escapee from Sesame Street
Graham's tee shot sails away. And also position A. Bill Rogers. Seventh green and a good shot. Beautiful shot. And look at that ball moving again. So the greens are getting quicker. The nerves are getting tighter. The pulses are beating quicker. Burns still ahead. To Merrill Lynch, whose sensitivity to your investment goals and agility in helping you reach them make Merrill Lynch what they are, a breed apart. By Goodyear Eagle High Performance Radios, the Racing Eagles Goodyear teamed for the streets. By General Electric, GE makes products that make life easier and better. At GE, we bring good things to life. And by AMF, makers of Ben Hogan golf equipment, head tennis rackets and sportswear, sunfish sailboats. At AMF, we make weekends. Alan Marquez. Back again at Marion, United States Open, final round coverage. George Burns leading this man, David Graham, by one stroke. Playing the sixth hole, 420-yard par four. Graham started out birdieing the first two holes. He trailed by three, remember. When the day started, now trails only by one at one point. It moved into a tie for the lead before bogeying the last hole. Good shot. Mm, very good. Hole high. Shouldn't flirt with that trap on the left. You saw Bill Rogers' problems there a moment ago. Now, this is the final pairing of the day, playing the last of the long holes in the golf course until they get to 14. They'll move into the short par four, some of them extremely short, one of them only 312 yards, but that is the devilish middle of Marion. Crenshaw on the ninth hole. Ben has dropped to one under par, so he's five shots out of the lead now. Still a contender. Even par for the day. On the par three, ninth hole. Oops. And he'll have to play that out of the bunker. This hole playing at 179 yards today. They're using the left-hand tee, are they not, Dave? Yes. Yep. The shorter of the two tees. That's why they make the pin position a little tougher. But if anyone is a good bunker player, as Frank Hannigan was saying a moment ago about the statistics that are kept on tour. Ben is right in there with, or was leading, I know, a couple of weeks ago with saves out of the sand. Okay, now, I, see, uh, I was going to ask Bob Rosberg about how long a shot George has here. He looked like he just killed that drive. Well, they're back in that area of the course where a transmission's a little tough. Yeah, it's lower down in there. Try once more, Bob. No, that's okay. We'll We'll watch the shot. All anyway. right. John Cook has edged up the leaderboard. He's tied with Nicholas now and with Rogers at two under. Sammy Rachel's also at two under. Whoops. Bunker. Uh huh. I believe. That, that ball's left in the left hand bunker. Thanks, Bob. We got you that time. So the leader is bunkered. Leads just by one stroke, and then four strokes behind him are Nicholas, John Cook, Bill Rogers, and Sammy Rachels, who is a very, very big surprise. He's been on tour since 1975. Just about keeps his card every year. Last year, I think he won twelve, thirteen thousand dollars, something like that. There are some of the other. Jim Thorpe picked up a birdie uh, at the end of eight holes. He's one under the man who led the first day with a 66. Many interesting possibilities remain here on the shores of Cobb Creek, Cobbs Creek. It's the 11th green, you see, of the creek coming in front and around the right side, and it goes behind it. And if you happen to miss the creek long, you're out of bounds. Well, we'll be getting to this hole. We wanted to give you a preview look at it because this is where Bobby Jones wrapped up the Grand Slam. It is also where George Burns yesterday had a near disaster when he put his ball behind the grandstand. Nicholas. at the eighth hole. Eighth hole, which is 360 yards in length. And he needs one now. He's had two birdies, but two bogeys so far today. The last one, a quite short but difficult putt. And have to make sure of that one. That's the length he missed on the last hole. 
And once you start missing them too, it, it begins to play on your mind. And of course, when you three putt as Jack did back at number seven there, when he had a, what looked like a relatively simple birdie putt up the hill and you walk off the green with five, you just want to take a bite out of your putter. <laughs> All right. Wondered if Bob has had a chance to look at the lie over there. If Rossi had a chance, is it buried or is it sitting all right? David, it looks like it's sitting pretty good. It oh. kind of rolled into the bunker right. off the bank. We have a good look at it now. Doesn't have quite the problem Bill Rogers had. A little bit uphill, Jim. Should help the ball hold a little, make it come down a little softer. It's a little bit of a downslope there, yep. and uh, it just shows you how quick the greens have gotten over yesterday. And I should think each time you have a difficult putt like this, there has to be some accumulation of tension the further you have to go. Vic Gezzi told me a long time ago that if you keep leaving yourself four, five, and six footers for your pars, you have got to miss one no matter how good a putter you are. Well, that's, that's the point. David Graham, on the other hand, is safely on the green. There is the situation once again, and those four strokes between Burns and those four men down there, two under par could disappear so quickly. That's two birdies for one of those fellas, two bogeys for him, that's all. A lot faster game than you think, you know, with all the things going on at one time. Big putt for Jack here. This is for a par, remember. A bogey in the last hole. Okay, okay. You just sneak up and get that one out of there after the last one. David Graham for a birdie. He's putting a little bit uphill. Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. Uh, the putt the last hole at the fifth, putting down the hill, he knocked it so far back. Mm -hmm. You tend to remember. Okay, par four to keep him at five under par. But as they battle for the lead, they're going backwards towards the other, the other players. Here's our first look at Sammy Rachels. He may very well have never been on television before. We <laughs> haven't have him, I know, know that. Funny thing about, about him, Jim, is that he doesn't play very many tournaments unless they're in this part of the country, in the eastern part. Mm -hmm. He doesn't go to the west coast to play. He, and yet, this year, he's only made the cut in two out of 11 events, but oh, almost had another birdie. That would have that would have put him in sole possession of third place in this championship. Sammy Rachel joined the tour in 1975. His best year was 79 when he won $17,000. Tied for 10th at Tallahassee. That was his best finish so far this year, in which he has won a total of $4,150. Well, he should have a little payday if he can negotiate the last five holes. He's got now going into <laughs> Marion's teeth. Okay, this for the par for the leader. All right, great four. That's the ones you have to make. Great four, Georgie. Burns holds his one-stroke lead, and Sammy Rachels of Defuniac Springs, Florida, has moved into it. You can see George shaking his head about that second shot, I'm sure. Okay, George burns by one, and we'll return to Marion live. David Graham hitting his tee shot at the seventh with an iron. Playing for position, George Burns has already driven and is in the rough. He's missed the fairway again on this hole. Just 350 yards and the flag today well to the back of the green and the position getting very tense indeed there's Burns by that flag looks to be settled down nicely in the rough and an awkward shot for Burns across the bunker to the flag but with quite a, 
a bit of green to work with. Jack Nicholas. Nicholas moments ago at the ninth. Seven iron. Oh, and a nice bounce. Just pitched on the top of the bunker. And now Jack has a putt for a two. Well, Jack is Jack. He's uh, had a couple of birdies. Still smiles, though. Still gets a smile on that face of his. He's had a, a couple of little minor disasters, a couple of hiccups. But a chance here. Very much a chance for two at the ninth. There's a great bit of architecture for you. Bunkers and water. And there's the leaderboard with Burns still going well. Just one ahead of David Graham. It's almost developing into a personal match play battle between Burns and Graham. Other players, though, are there. Chi-Chi's dropped away a little bit. Aoki's completed his 18 holes. He's one over par. That's a score of 2-8-1. The winning score here, 1970, was just one less than that, 280, when Jack Nicholas and Lee Trevino tied. Let's uh, go to Jim McKay for an update of the situation. Yes, for those of you who may have joined us since we came on the air, here's what's happened so far, really. Uh, we had George Burns starting out with a three-stroke lead over David Graham. Now, Jack Nicholas had made the point after yesterday's round that should a man with a three-stroke lead really start fast, get a couple of birdies, he could run away from this field before anybody had a chance. Well, it didn't happen. J David Graham, on the other hand, birdied the first two holes and very quickly moved within a single shot of George Burns. From that point on, the net effect has been that Burns has lost a shot, Graham has gained a shot, therefore the three-stroke lead has shrunk down to one. We have Jack Nicholas playing even par golf, but not doing it evenly. He's had two birdies, he's had two bogeys, he missed a couple of short putts. We have others moving up on the leaderboard. John Cook is back to two, and Sammy Rachels is the surprise of the day at two under. Back to you, Peter. Thank you, Jim. Bill Rogers at the eighth. For a birdie and getting it. That will do him no harm at all. Three under now. And in third position. Back to David Graham at the seventh. Second shot. Seventh hole. 350 yards. The flag at the back of the green. And dead center. Graham coming straight at it. Well, he's played so many of these that have really gone close. Will it bounce? No, it just bounces off and up against that little fringe. Not far from the hole, but an awkward little shot. Peter George has a very difficult shot out of the rough. Uh, he's going to have to hit a probably a real hard pitching wedge uh, to get it up in the air, and then he has to drop it down pretty softly and he's coming down off a downhill lie and with the wind really a hard shot well he's given it plenty of air and look at this one getting ever closer Chance for a three. Burns doing very well indeed. Nicholas, though, at the ninth, having been fortunate enough to bounce off that bank, has this putt for a two. And Jack, if he's going to win yet another major event, has got to start holding putts like this. Well done, Dad. 
Okay, so. so Nicholas now three under. And in third position, tied with Bill Rogers. David Graham and George Burns at the seventh. Graham just off the back of the green in two. Burns with a hole of putt for a three. Well, they line up. We'll look at Ben Crenshaw for a birdie at the tenth. Crenshaw 64 yesterday. And popping them in. Potting them nicely today, two under. Back to Graham with this awkward little shot just up against the fringe. Good firm run at it. Four and a half feet past. A good four and a half feet past. Rogers at the ninth. Peter, he has a very difficult shot to stop on the green here. He's going straight down wind and without much room. He's got to hit really a great shot to get close. The voice of Ed Sneed following this match for us. Get down. Get down. Get down. <laughs> He's got some verbal control over that ball. He was crying get down before it had gone more than 40 feet and get down it did. And young Bill has a putt for a three. And so does this man, George Burns. At the seventh. Nicholas uh, three putted from uh, perhaps even a little less than this. Having a good look at it. Burns takes a little time in preparing, but once over the ball, wastes very little time indeed. this part to go seven under par for the championship. Back and through with that pendulum stroke and just let it drift away to the right. Crenshaw at the tenth. The 11th, that's Crenshaw, with this uphill shot played with an iron nicely into position. That's the 11th hole. Down and over the brow. One of the great holes in golf. Now back to David Graham, looking over his par putt at the 7th. Such a testing length. Once in front, once behind there, just moves the putter up to the ball. Lovely stroke. Jack Nicholas at the tenth. You'll remember yesterday he slipped here, but not today. He was well anchored in a beautiful tee shot. He slipped, remember, uh, Peter on the tee shot and hit the tree and went in the bunker, and he had all kinds of problems, but that's a perfect position. Indeed he did, Bill. And there's this uh, lovely little tenth hole, tenth green. Nicholas on the fairway, not far away. See how the green is angled to the left. 
Take the bunkers. Back to George Burns at the eighth. <coughs> Two iron. There you see what he's got to do. Bunker right, bunker left. So he's got to place his tee shot between the two. Just doing the tee. And then off the two. Seems to like it. And that's the reason. Make a bird there. Eight hole, just 360 make yards. A, a three or an, uh, or an eight. Now David Graham. Also with a long iron, a one or a two iron, and safely down the fairway as well. You've got to be ever thinking, planning, working here at Marion, putting your ball into position. Let's have a look at those swings again in slow motion because they're two different physiques altogether. Burns a huge man, lots of movement above and below the waist, arms very high, huge distance now from the hands from the ball. Drops down, legs driving through, throws the club head at the ball, a little bit ungainly as he goes through, hugs the arms round his neck at the finish. But he's got it safely away. Graham, rather like a tortoise, head stuck in the shoulders, rounded swing, good position there, releases it nicely, and looks up. Good balance, good poise. Phil Rogers at the ninth for a birdie and it's looking nice thank you very much what a lovely game it is when you hit the fairways and get on the greens and just see the little pill disappear and you rogers support us here today now three under Indeed, that puts him four under. Let's have a look at that again. I wondered whether it was going to quite reach that little slow swing. It looks to be slowing down and, oh, will it? Oh. Nicely done, Billy. So Burns, after seven holes, for him of this final round, Still ahead of David Graham. Bill Rogers, though, creeping up. Nicholas still there. John Cook playing well. And many others waiting in the wings. There's the 10th green. Pin today, back right. Nicholas may be in as about as good a position as you can be to get a second shot into this flag. There he is. Little right hand. on the stick. Hand and arm shot, and pretty good. <laughs> Lovely shot. That hole is cut just about five yards from the front of the green, which is about as close as we cut them, Peter, and, and it, uh, it's also downhill, as you can see, so it would take quite a shot to get it in close. Well, you need a, a lot of nerve, Frank, and uh, also the right club. You've got to be aggressive. You've got to attack. It's no good putting it uh, 10, 15 yards past the hole. But, of course, that bunker you see right in front of David Graham is waiting for a misjudged shot. Watch the pace of this swing, the rhythm. Easy back and then just clip through. Has he got it right? Oh, caught the downslope. 
Another yard on that, and it would have been very good. <laughs> That's two in a row right up against the fringe, too, uh, Peter. That, that ball is in the identical situation it was in the last hole. Yes, yeah, so near and yet so far, Bob. That looked uh, as if it could have been very close. Like you said, another yard, and it would have been perfect. Now Burns has been, has been given the that little buffer. He, he sees his nearest challenger not challenging the hole this time. Now, can George play a good one? It's going to be a little long. Very good shot, though. Yes, that's a holeable putt. Big George moves on. Back to Rogers at the tenth. Tucked away up in the trees. This is a, a, a marvelous little hole. You drive uphill, the greens tucked away to the left. The big hitters, when they're just playing for a couple of dollars, might even have a slash at this green. But just look at that great funnel of trees they've got to come out of. And, well, got a... a Peter, he, he has put the ball into the right rough, just past the, the bunkers on the right, the, the big ones. It appears he should be all right. If his lie's decent, I'll get up there and try to look at it. Thank you, Ed. It looked as if it might have nestled down a little bit. So, there's a lot going on here, but George Burns is still leading. David Graham by one here at Merriam. We're at Merriam again, Jim McKay with Dave Marr, David Graham, one stroke out of the lead with an approach putt that leaves him another rather difficult one. Meanwhile, his playing companion of the day, Dave uh, George Burns, the leader, has a makeable putt. But here is Nicholas for a birdie on 10. Jack gained one stroke on par on the front side. He is two strokes closer to Burns than he was when he began the day. He was five back, now he's three back. This could make it two back, at least temporarily. Looks good. <sighs> Oh, man. Oh. It's like old Richie Valentine is sharpening the edges of those cuffs because you've got to hit the center of the hole for it to go in, Jim. Richie Valentine, of course, being the green superintendent here at the Marion Golf Club, which has had only two superintendents in its history since the early teens. Richie and his father, who was here for 54 years, both have maintained the quality of this grand old lady of a course on Ardmore Avenue. And we don't need to tell George. This would be a very nice little birdie to make and get uh, a little bit of a cush between he and the rest of the field. You know, Jim Thorpe, who led this tournament on the first day, dropped back to even par today. Now he's got two birdies. He's back at two under. He's not out of it. Of course, David Graham, one behind. Bill Rogers, two behind. Nicholas, three behind. Jim Thorpe, four behind. Crenshaw, five behind, along with John Cook, Sammy Rachels, Frank Connor, John, and, yeah, that's it. Yeah. See most of them on the board. Six, five, four, three, two, one is the story of the tournament at the moment, but it could be seven, five in a moment. Let's slow down. That's Ooh, very quick it. once it goes by the hole there. Yep. Now, Bill Rogers on the 10th fairway. Ed, did you get a a look at the uh, the lie he's got there yes i did jim it is really sitting down the only saving grace is that he's only got about 95 yards and he can run the ball this is one of the shortest holes you'll ever see in a u.s open 312 yards but he couldn't make it out of that long grass that green is tucked away to the left very shortly we're going to have be joined by many millions of viewers overseas as the british broadcasting Company begin Corporation picks up our broadcast, the BBC, and of course Peter Alice is their traditional host of their golf telecast. So you're going to hear, as you did yesterday if you were with us, Peter coming on as if he was coming on the air for the first time today. Uh, so you'll be privy to that information. But that greeting is just for our overseas viewers who will be watching live. This is going to Japan. There are press people from all over the world here, 400 and some I believe. 
Now here comes Peter. Well, welcome to the last round of the 81st US Open Championship, and that's the position. George Burns, yesterday's leader, still there, but now just one ahead of David Graham. It's a fine day. The course really is in immaculate condition. The greens are lightning fast. Nicholas is charging about the place. This man, David Graham, is in second place. He's just going to pop that one in to stay right there. Everything is happening here. It's a most wondrous day. Uh, the tension, the feeling for the game is just about right. George Burns, who has not been in this position before, is doing a marvelous job. He's hanging in, holding on, battling away. He's just had a chance for a birdie. Slip by four or five feet, perhaps less than that. And uh, he's got a little putt here to remain one ahead. Let's go back to Jim McKay and my fellow colleagues, Dave Maher, the American Ryder Cup captain this year, Bob Rosberg, Bill Fleming, and Ed Sneed down on the fairway, and of course, Frank Hannigan of the USGA. Over to you, Jim. Thank you, Peter. Safely in for the leader, George Burns, maintains his one-stroke lead over David Graham. A pleasure, as always, to be address addressing those of you and you. In, that's an American, isn't it? <laughs> those of you in Scotland. <laughs> and in Brooklyn. And England and Wales and Ireland. <laughs> and Brooklyn. Uh, we have a marvelous golf tournament for you here. Six, five, four, three, two, one. People in all of those positions under par. Bill Rogers now with his third shot on this very short par four, 312 yards long. That's all it is but not easy. Well, they got such a bad line of rough, Jim, and it, as happens to the best of players, the club turned over and he only hit it about 30 or 40 yards on his second shot. Dave, even on that shot, he had a bunch of loose sand behind his ball, uh, and he called the USGA officials over to get a ruling, and of course, when you're off the green, you cannot remove sand. It's only a loose impediment on the green, so he did not have a good lie even for his third shot. It's amazing, Ed, how short a hole can be. And of course, you played the first two rounds, and yet how tough it can turn out in case you miss one of those shots. <laughs> Dave, uh, some of those short holes turned out to be a little too tough for me. <laughs> they really are tough. Uh, the course teases you and tantalizes you into trying to force birdies when you when you have the opportunity, and you can't force them. I think you have to respect the holes just like you do the long holes. And, and just hope that they come. Uh, they've got so many tough holes here that when you get to the easy ones, a lot of guys make the mistake of trying to force the birdies. Okay. Mm -hmm. A good rules point that Ed made there, by the way, that sand is only considered a loose impediment on the green. So if you're in the rough or even on the fairway, and you're playing at your club, and you have sand there, don't brush that away because somebody might call it on you. It should be yourself that does the calling. George Burns on the ninth hole, 179 yards today. Playing shorter than yesterday because there are two separate tees for this hole. Plus, it's downhill, downwind. I believe Nicholas hit a seven iron a while ago. George should be somewhere in that area if the wind is the same. Get down. You hear him say, get down. Bunker behind the green there. Didn't see yep. where the ball finished. Just over the, the green, back just fringe. over the back there. That's one of those annoying little shots, though, isn't it? They're all annoying when you're not on the <laughs> green. You get, uh, that's U.S. Open. That's what you get when you play in major championships. Tough little pitches and chips around the green with little grass around the ball. You're never quite sure how fast it's going to come out. David Graham. Again, for those of you who have just joined us overseas, it's a hot, muggy day in the Philadelphia area, in the United States. Temperature in the mid 80s humidity about 65 percent six iron we're told is what david graham is using he's been a little unlucky on his last two iron shots into seven and eight let's see what he can do at the ninth hole great pin position here back behind the bunker and just in front of another one turn ball, turn ball you heard that proper club just not going to fool with the left side there. Okay, so both balls are in the picture there. Burns is on the left in the, that long fringe around the green. Graham on the green. Now Jack Nicholas, who is three strokes out of the lead. He started five strokes out of the lead. He's on the famous 11th hole. This is the one where Bobby Jones closed out his grand slam. Cobbs Creek goes all the way around it. He has put his tee shot in good position on this short par four, 370 yards in length. Greatest to nine iron, Jim. 
very small green. The creek all around it. And look at that fine shot. Fine shot by Jack Nicholas over Cobbs Creek, or as it would be called in Scotland, Cobbs Burn. <laughs> Could be. He's playing with John Schroeder. Again, a good look at the problem here. And that green is just as small as it looks there. <clears throat> It's even smaller when the ball leaves the club. You're mm. not quite sure where it comes down. To hit it over the creek and keep it short of the hole. Great shot. By the way, David, uh, John Schroeder has been playing very briskly today. No lag at all. Very few waggles. John, of course, no normally is one of the slower players. Looked there like he got a nice break there. I couldn't yep. Came close to the bunker, but uh, kicked onto the green. Now on tape bill rogers needing this for a par at the 10th hole remember he was in the rough on his first shot a terrible lie couldn't get it to the green in two got it on in three needs this for the par and he couldn't do it so that when he makes the next one would drop him down to a tie again with Jack Nicholas at three under par a tie for third place three shots behind the leader George Burns two behind David Graham uh, let's take a look at the back nine that's coming up they continue the run of short holes as you see on 10 11 uh, the 12th hole longer 13th a short one then the long voyage home 14 15 16 17 and 18 you can see the yardage is long and all of them ex except the 15th hole but that plays longer than it looks and the dreaded quarry comes into play on each of the last three holes we're looking forward to it I'm not sure golfers are very misleading numbers Jim 3120 mm. yards because the yardage is all packed as you said into the last five holes you don't find many championship courses with 312 yard par fours and 129 yard par threes. Good shot. Fine Good shot. shot. So, we should hold that one for a par three to stand fast at six under. He's one over for the day, six under for the U.S. Open Championship. George Burns, who had previous rounds of 69, 66, and 68. Taps it in to remain one over on today's round, but one stroke ahead of David Graham, who has yet to putt on this hole. That's good playing. He shot 37 on the front right. nine with a three-stroke lead, and uh, listen, that's not bad at all. Especially. Once they get to 14, as we say, you should not expect too much charging or too many birdies out of anybody, and that's what the pursuers must remember. That's when Marion charges. Mm -hmm. True enough. Now, look at the gallery and the white faces of Marion, as they're called. The bunkers, 126 of them in all. Of course, George's chip could have helped and should have helped David as to how fast it is down there. It's not really uh, a lot downhill, but different from yesterday. They're much faster. They're in their true Marion Lightning fast form. Yesterday they were considerably slower because of overnight rains. If you weren't with us earlier, 11 feet 4 inches on the stimp meter, that how they measure the speed of greens. And he measured this one just a little too quick. Not quite that quick. Right in the heart if he just hit it a little. You say you only recall them having faster stem meter measurements once at Jack Nicholas's tournament? At uh, Muirfield this year, I was told they were 13 feet. Of course, you slipped down when you walked on the green. <laughs> Muirfield Village, of course, in, in Ohio. Now Nicholas with another attempt at a birdie. Speaking of Muirfield Village. Yep, the man who built it. Now that's what you should do. If something bothers you, then step away, get your line again, and come back. I'll always think that Doug Sanders missed winning the British Open because he picked up whatever it was in front of the ball and stayed in position. On the 18th at the old course. At 72nd hole, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Even more dramatic. Oh, well, walks away again. As you say, he's 
not a matter of nervousness. He just sees something there that blew, blew into the line, apparently, after he had taken his position again. Well, Hal Sutton, the present U.S. Amateur Champion, told me an interesting story. He played the first two rounds with Jack, and he got eight over par the first seven holes, and he went up, and he said, Jack, you know, you really intimidate me. And Jack kind of looked at him, and he said, look, Hal, he says, I'm just as nervous as you are. I just have 20 years more experience. Now, come on, let's play. And Hal said he played well. From then on, he felt good that Jack had sort of calmed him down. 20 more years and 19 major championships, trying for an unbelievable 20th major championship and an unprecedented fifth United States Open. Go, 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 go. I hit it. Uh, I didn't like that. that. As always, they know it immediately. So it's a par for Jack Nicklaus. He's three strokes out of the lead. George Burns is the leader. Then David Graham. There's the view of the 13th here at Merrin, just 129 yards. Marvelous little short hole to rank alongside the postage stamp at Troon. And many others. Quickly, though, to Bill Rogers, who's at the 11th. Pulled it a little bit, Peter. It's going to be on the left side of the green. <laughs> Safely on the putting surface at this uh, Marvellous short par four. Now over to the 13th. And the first round leader, Jim Thorpe, who's really playing remarkably well. Two under par, one under for today. Jim Thorpe, who led the championship in the first round, he's got a pitching wedge. And all the dreams of an open championship are almost true for this man. That's what an open championship is all about. He's he come from nowhere qualified tried many times to come into this championship he's got in led the first day and he's still there very much up with the leaders on the last day and that's what an open championship is truly all about great hope funny thing happened to hubert green here this morning earlier uh, peter he hit the flag he hit the uh, wicker basket off the team he wasn't amused it bounced off the green and he made four Crenshaw also with the pitching wedge. The wind behind today on this 13th hole, 129 yards. Crenshaw, who yesterday played the course in 64 strokes. Today, level par, one under par for the championship. And safely on the green. Not too pleased, but uh, I was saying the postage stamp at Troom and hole at Pebble Beach, great holes. Now the 12th. Jeff Nicholas tied for third place. 12th tee. Good spot. 12th hole, 405 yards. They come out through the trees. It's a hole dogging left to right. Good hole. Burns still holding on, but George is missing a lot of fairways, playing an iron from the tee, missing. The rough here is very punishing. So far, his nerve, his strength has kept him going. He's just one ahead of David Graham. The last man to win, uh, a non-American to win, of course, was Tony Jacklin, who will be analysing play in London when we go for our commercial breaks. And, Tony, we've just heard that you've won the Jersey Open, so uh, hats off to you from all of us here at Marion. As we look down here at George Burns in trouble up the hill at the 10th hole. Bob Rosberg's down there. He does not have a very good lie, Peter, but he only has about 70 yards. And actually, if he carries a ball over the bunker, he has quite a bit of room. I would think he would take a, re a sand wedge and take a real hard swing at it and get it up in the air. And George has an advantage because he is so strong. He's played a lot of great shots out of the rough. Well, now we'll pull back. That's George has got to go over that huge bunker with those rushes in. Some call it love grass. Some people call it something else. But here's George giving it the big old heave ho. That's not going to make it. And it didn't. That really didn't even come close to making it, uh, Peter.
That ball dropped quite a bit short of the green. I can, I'm on the other side of the fairway, and I cannot tell whether it's in the sand or in the uh, love grass, but it didn't even come close to getting over the bunk. So George Burns, the leader in trouble, up the hill at the tenth. David Graham, who's battling away. I say it's uh, a number of years since an overseas visitor won the American Open Championship. And although David Graham lives here in the United States, still uh, very much an Aussie at heart. And the Australians down there, I'm sure, who are watching this program will be following his progress very carefully indeed. Little pitch, short shot into this very attractive little short par four. It's going to have to get up. And again, a little shy. But he's on the green in two. Burns in trouble in the bunker in two. Nicholas at three under. A couple of scores for our overseas visitors. Ballesteros had a 75. That's nine over par. Gary Player, 71, six over par. McNulty from South Africa, 11 over par, 72, 75 today. Aoki from Japan, a 67, best round of the day. He's just one over par, 281. Tom Watson, a 73, 285. Greg Norman hasn't finished yet, but it looks as if he's going to be around six over par, 286. And there's George Burns, his ball lying neatly in the bunker, if neatly is the right word. And there you see the dreaded reeds, grass, rushes, dunes, love grass, scotch mist, southern comfort, call it whatever you will, it's all there waiting for him as we see Jim Thorpe trying for a two at the 13th. He's got a putt to go into third, but he's not hit it hard enough. But George, well, Jim will be thinking, well, I'm doing rather well. And uh, if you'd said to him a few days ago, you'll be battling away. Well, here's Nicholas, though, his second shot to the 12th, very much in contention. About 145 yards, Peter, and I'd say a seven or eight iron. You remember yesterday, he put it up here, what, four feet? Long. And a slick putt coming back. So Nicholas at the back of the 12th, and that green is like, well, a ski slope. Some uh, statistics for you. We've had yesterday, uh, we had 11 players out of 46 broke par. Today, only four players out of 46 have better the par, which here at Merion is a very strict 70. Here was George Burns, out of the bunker at the 10th. Third shot. Of course, in beautiful condition, you have to uh, go a long way to find a weed on the course, anywhere. Some people may think that's great. Some people think, ah, oh, that's not the true ruggedness of the game. But I tell you what, it's a delight to see. David Graham putting for a three. This would put him six under par. Burns is about 10 or 12 feet from the hole, so he's by no means assured of getting his par four. So what wouldn't Mr. Graham give to see this disappear? No, he'll be pleased to see the next one disappear. Greg Norman. His fellow Australian finished, in fact, in 76, 7 over par, 2, 8, 7. But the course, very speedy, very quick, very slick today. The greens cut both ways. They've been rolled. They've had the heavy rollers on them. It's a hot, beautiful day. Small course, Marion. Limited uh, spectators to 18,500. But it really is a delight. It's a marvellous examination paper. It's not a monstrous course. You don't just stand on the tee and smash away as hard as you can. Every thought has, a shot has to be thought out. Some people don't like it, but um, I think it's great. 
That's how they are. Burns here, George Burns, lining up his putt to remain six under. Some more players. Sammy Rachel's there, even par after 16 holes. Frank Connor, good round today from Frank, 68. Big, long Hinkle is there also. And a few of them hovering around, waiting for some of the big boys to slip. Bill Rogers, in particular, there could well sneak in at the end of the day. That's the fascination of this game as we watch George Burns for a bit, for a par, for a par. And it looks smooth, no, slides away. So Burns drops the stroke. So he certainly is struggling a bit. George, who's taken an iron off many tees today, a one and a two iron, and has missed the fairway often. It's only his courage on occasions that has kept him going. Now, this man is also full of courage. David Graham, after that rather weak first putt, has this one to remain with. George Burns, Jack Nicholas, meanwhile, at the 12th, has a lightning fast putt down the hill. Well, Jack held a monster putt at the 5th, which was like a, well, it was like a glacier. It was going like a rocket. It disappeared. He could do with another one. Will it turn? I think he's overdone it. Overborrowed. Oh. oh, look at it go. Look at it go. Still going. I don't think these greens are fast. Now that's one, two, three, four, four or five paces past the hole. And he was just trying to get it close. And he's not a bad operator. Now back to David Graham. If he holds this, it, they will be jointly in the lead. He and George Burns. It's right there. Graham, of course, has won the PGA Championship here in the United States and a very good player indeed. Now then, George Burns must hold this little putt to remain at five under par. Very confidently. So it's all hotting up here. Two players in the lead, Burns and David Graham. Jack Nicholas is there. Rogers also. Much more to come. We return to Murray in the final round of the U.S. Open in the classic 11th hole. The one where Bobby Jones wrapped up the Grand Slam of golf. 370-yard par four. David Graham has already hit. He is safely in the fairway. You hit straight ahead, over a hill, and down into a little valley here. Doesn't play very long, but you've got to put the ball in the fairway. This is where George Burns had so much trouble yesterday. Up ahead, by the way, Jack Nicholas made a bogey, has dropped down to two under par again. He's gone left again, just where he was, not just where he was yesterday, but the same general direction. And uh, Bob, you got have a good look at that or not? Yes, I have, Jim. The ball is exactly on the same line, but it came up short of where ja uh, of where George was yesterday. And it looks to be in the trample down grass. I think he's got a pretty good lot. Okay. <clears throat> there you see Cobbs Creek, which goes around the 11th, remember. Now, Nicholas, this is on tape. This is the par putt he had up ahead after watching his previous putt just run and run and run on these lightning fast screens. You can see no question of that going in. So he made the bogey. It's even par for the day now. But only three shots off the lead, and he started five shots off the lead. The yes, leaders are coming back to the pack. Now to Jack Nichols live on the 13th, a little par three, 129 yards. Peter quite properly compared it to the postage stamp at Troon and the seventh hole at Pebble Beach, which is even a little shorter than this, believe it or not. None of them easy holes. In fact, classic par three. Well, this screen's quite a bit bigger than either one of the other two. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you see the dune grass in the bunker there. Yeah, there are different kinds of grass in the bunker, as Peter indicated. Dune grass here, which is brought from the seashore, from Leo Frazier's Atlantic City Country Club to here. That's where he almost made an ace yesterday. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be just to the left of the That's flag. Right. 
And a little long and in the back bunker. Oh boy. No, not in the bunker, Bill. Hung up on the Not in the bunker there. at all, but in the longish grass on the back, and it'll be difficult, very difficult to get down and two from there. Well, the good news is that he's got a lot of room there, Jim, yeah. so you, he can play a number of shots. If if the flag were cut very close to you, then you're pretty well typed as to what shots you can hit. Now, George Burns, if he is on the trampled area for people at home, he's going to have a good hard pan, and you can spin the ball a lot. It's a, it's a different shot than he had yesterday where he was in the tall grass and didn't have as much control. Again, for those who were not with us yesterday, we might explain that he was in very tall, tangled grass, had a terrible lie yesterday, in much the same area where he is now. On his second shot, he tried to go for the green and pulled it straight left, I mean, almost straight left into those trees behind that grandstand that you see there now. And that phrase saved him, the fact that it was behind the grandstand because he got a free drop to the point of nearest relief to the left of where you're looking now. But he was in back, in back of that grandstand. And if you would go left from there, now, you see he got a free drop, uh, you know, at the end of the, the of the grandstand, and then was able to play it up. He actually played it up short of the green, didn't make it to the green, but then flipped it on and made a bogey five. Now, had it, he stayed in the woods, he might have made six, seven, who knows what. However, this time, yeah, he's in that uh, sort of dead grass. Well, that's where the gallery has walked. Yep. It, it wasn't dead at the start of the no, week. No, I but know that. But. It's, Right now, does, is that a very difficult lie for a professional golfer, or is it something you might, might almost like to have? Well, it's uh, well, you'd certainly rather have that than in the tall grass, because yeah. with this way, when it's hard uh, ground, hard pan, you might call it, mm -hmm. you can get more spin on it. Now, that looks like it's in sort of a little bird nest, though. Rossi, did you get a good look at that? It's not too bad, David. But what kind of action might he get off this? Well, he's got to worry about hitting it thin. Okay, that's what I was... Hit a beautiful shot. Oh boy. George Burns still unflappable. He talked about the historic 11th hole. I'm sure he doesn't want to be part of the history of 11 unless he wins. He already is after yesterday. Jack Nicholas now with this second shot, having put it over the green on the short par three, the 13th hole. Nicholas, remember, only three shots out despite the trouble he's been having as he goes along. This is the kind of lie where you may not be able to ground your club, which doesn't bother a player like Nicholas because he doesn't ground his club anyhow. That's fast. Yeah. Good shot. Pulled Good up nicely. Shot. A very nice shot for Jack. We've seen him make thousands of those, but they're still difficult. Now David Graham, with his second shot on the 11th, he had a much better tee shot than George Burns. He played it to the fat part of the green. It's going to be a little left and long. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we mentioned earlier that these middle par fours are short, but they are simply not easy for anybody. Each one, each one, Jim, has its own little problems, whether it's Cobb Creek or the, the dune grass or whatever runs through there or narrow openings. You've got to hit the proper shot. As we saw Nicholas hit the next hole, number 12, if you get above the hole there, it's it's all day job to get down to two putts. As you watch the leaders and hear scores of some others who have been playing here today. You see Mark Hayes had fine 69 today, by the way. Calvin Bill Lee. Rogers is only two strokes behind. He's in third place by himself. Two strokes behind Burns and Graham. And a marvelous opportunity here because mm -hmm. he's putting up the hill or side hill. Now watch this putt break. It's going to come straight into your set and it dive to the right. He makes that see how far up he's, he's aimed there, Jim? Yeah. Keep it up. Oh, and I suspect that all of Texarkana just came to its feet. <laughs> Off the knees onto the feet. They call it Texarkana because it's close to the Texas-Arkansas border, right? Exactly right. Now Nicholas with the par putt. You can see his ball. The name right on his ball there. <laughs> Jack Nicholas, his ball. Well, it's a good way to identify the ball. Yep. He's missed a couple of shorties like this today. And so he remains tied with Jim Thorpe at two under par in a tie for fourth place, three shots behind the leaders. 
It's far from over. He liked that for satisfying. He liked Happy Father's Day from his son, Jack. That's right. How they've grown really to love this man. When he first came out 20 years ago, Arnold Palmer was the king. And many of the fans actually resented Jack's intrusion on the kingdom. And it took many years before they really gave him the kind of ovation you just saw and the shouts and encouragement. Until finally last year, after he won the Open, remember Dave, and he was in the scoring tent, the young people were outside chanting, Jack, Jack, Jack. Back to 11. I'd say that's what you're saying about Nicholas in somewhat the same way. I don't know that people appreciated Hogan until the, the automobile the accident and the comeback. Right? And the comeback and the opens that he, three opens that he won after that of and course. other things. Of course, he won the first comeback open right here at Marion 31 years ago. Can't believe it's that long. There you see Rogers just one stroke off the lead behind these two men. Screen is smallish, but it's <coughs> fairly level. Speed for David is important. All right. Good time. Good time. Good time. Make sure up from there is the par, obviously. Him look over at George and say, can I finish out? Will I be in your line? You're able to do that. So Graham finishes this hole and remains one, oh, one under par for the day. Five under for the championship. And behind Burns' grandstand, as it may be dubbed, if ever it returns. Bill Rogers at 13. Yep. Now remember, Nicholas went over this green. Let's see what Bill Rogers does in this devilishly short hole. Great flag position here today. Short right. Okay. All right. He'll have that longish one. Yeah, but that's where to put it. <laughs> yeah, right in the middle of the, the green. The lip of that bunker in front of there is just a little higher than the rest of the green, and it just takes a little bit more to carry that. You shouldn't fool around with a hole that looks so simple. You look at it 129 as George back at the 11th hole for his birdie. As you know, David, one of the great things about this golf course is it makes you play so many different kinds of shots. Jim Thorpe told me after his 66, the first round, that he literally used every one of the 14 clubs in his bag. That's great architecture when you make a player run through the bag. That's right. <laughs> nope, well, no birdie to be there, but if he makes the bar, he will still be the leader of the U.S. Open, at least for now, along with his playing companion, David Graham. George Burns and David Graham are tied for the lead, a stroke ahead of Bill Rogers in the U.S. Open. There's a lot to come. Bill Rogers putting for a possible birdie on the par 3 13th hole, having birdied the 12th. Have to make sure of that one for the par. He's only one stroke behind the co-leaders, George Burns and David Graham. He's two strokes ahead of Jack Nicholas and Jim Thorpe. Good position, though, Jim. She's just ahead of the other two who are driving, or the leading two, I should say, leading pair. And speaking of one of them, George Burns driving at the 12th hole. Okay. Four left. I looked left. Four left, he said, so. We'll look to there. It looks like he has found the rough again, Rossberg. Where is it? Bob Rossberg. Yes, that's very short, Jim, and in the left-hand rough, uh, it's barely cleared the creek. And that creek is about, uh, I think it might have nicked the tree coming out of the chute. Uh, sure. But uh, it's not in very good position, I'll tell you that. They hit out of a tunnel of trees here. The tee is way back. Not too difficult to nip one of those trees on your way out. There you can see back into that teeing ground. Let's have a look. Now, if we take a look here, as as uh, George goes through the ball here, I'd like you to really watch his left arm. This is where I think he pulls it. Just watch his left arm through the ball, about in this area. This new little thing called a telestrator we're trying here. Now bring it on down. Looks like a pretty good move, but looks like his left arm pulls away there. Come on. Breaks down a little too soon there through the ball and way to the left it goes. 
so now you know why that happened there. And he probably did nick the trees there. That is a very narrow draft. Well, you have to wonder, there's the par putt of Bill Rogers coming up. You have to wonder how long George Burns can keep driving into the rough and maintain the lead in this tournament. Okay, Bill Rogers has a par at the 13th and now moves to the terrifying, really scary part of this golf course, the last five holes. The middle holes here, the short ones, are devilish. They'll drive you crazy. The last ones are just plain slogging, difficult, hard. Jack Nicklaus on 14. This is a 418-yard par four, but it's uphill and plays longer than that. There's out of bounds on the left. And you can't see the green. You can see the top of the wicker basket, but not the green, the surface of the green. Good shot. Okay. Nicholas started the day two under. He's still two under at even par. He's had his share of birdies, but he's had exactly the same number of bogeys. Behind him, his son, Jack Jr., on this fa the Father's Day pairing here. Angelo Argia, who's ca caddied for him for so many years, is learning another business, the restaurant business, I think, and Jack wants him to devote his full time to that. There you see the placement of George Burns' ball and David Graham, G for Graham, of course, and George Burns with that long shot up to the 12th green. <clears throat> Bob Rosberg, uh, fill us in on this a little more, will you? Well, Jim, for the second hole in a row, George has put it in, a, in the dry rough where the people have been walking. He actually has a perfect lie. <laughs> and this is something that, you know, you don't really have happen very often in an open. He's had it happen two holes in a row now, and if he gets away with this one, uh, he could be tough from here in. That's well, a longer shot, though, Rossi. Well, he's got a long shot, David, but he's to the left, and you know how severely this green goes from left to right. Uh, if he hits it into the left part of the green, uh, it may run right down by the hole. Yeah, he has a shot of about 175 yards right in that area. Just make yourself shoot at our camera position back there, because it, it does go left to right. Is that about the land he'd want? I would think that would be perfect if he could hit it there. Okay, just as the fifth hole goes right to left all the way down, this one goes very much left to right. Everything falls away to the right on you. This is one hole you do not want to miss it to the right because almost everything that comes off this bank comes into the love grass in the bunker. Okay. <laughs> it's pretty hard to call it love grass when you're in it. <laughs> you may call it love, but I call it madness. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop talking, eh? It's time for that. What's this last shot? Kind of lie you'd love to have because you can play any sort of shot when it's this clean. As Bob said, nice break. They like oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, let me tell you, that is slick going down there. Yeah, his problems are not over on this hole. No. No, Bill Rogers had it to one place that you've got to have it short right. And speaking of Bill, Jim, if he can make par on each of the last five holes, I think your open champion is going to be Bill Rogers. Okay, well, when we did an open preview show a couple of weeks ago, you said that he was one of two younger players you thought had a real chance to win the U.S. Open, and he's still up there. It's just in the first three rounds. You just, uh, the last five holes here have gotten to most everyone. Now David Graham playing with Burns. And they see exactly the problem for him. About how long a shot does he have, Bob? About 125 yards, uh, David, and actually coming downwind now. Uh, he has a hard shot to play. He put it in the bunker here yesterday and, and got a big break that he didn't get in the, in the Scottish broom. But uh, yeah, I think he'll probably bail out to the left just a little and, and try and hold the putt. On its way. Oh, yes. Playing shot. Excellent shot by David Graham. Going to tie for the lead. Just head to head has been match play between these two so far. But unlike match play, they got to worry about Bill Rogers just behind them and Jack Nicholas and Jim Thorpe and Ben Crenshaw and young John Cook. How about the way Jim Thorpe has played? That's just great. Just remarkable. If Lon Hinkle had another good open. Sammy Rachel's finished it even. Notice Chi Chi Rodriguez started the day two under, got to three under, but now he's lost some and he's back to even par. It's still fine playing. Chi Chi's had uh, played well the last six tournaments he's played in. Nicholas up on 14, beginning the long voyage home at Marion. 
A man never to count out. Never. Literally never. You have to admire a man that gives you 100% every time he hits a shot. I don't know that I've ever seen the man hit a shot where he just said, oh, to heck with it. I've got enough. I think we've seen him battling to make the cut. It's called pride, I believe. That's right. Big green here. Nope. No, no. No, no. Green's continuing to speed up. The sun still burning on them. Now, Jim Thorpe on the 15th fairway. He will not give up. Every time you expected to see this little known pro fade out of it, he comes back with a couple of birdies, and he's right in it. <laughs> Tie with Jack Nicholas can't be out of it. Like to tag with him all your life. Look, look Good at that. <laughs> He's got an opportunity, certainly, for a birdie right there. Now back to Graham and Burns. As they play the 12th hole, after they do that, they'll walk right across Ardmore Avenue. There's a, a, a street, a busy street, usually. It's been blocked off this week through the grace of the authorities of Haver Haverford Township. You know, Ardmore is in Haverford Township. That's a kind of a, you know, community thing they have around here. I just wonder if he can hit it easy enough to keep it around the hole. Still hit a good putt. Because if he hits it very solid going down that hill, it's going to just take off. Now, Nicholas for the par on 14. But he gets the par in 14, remains two under for the championship, three out of the lead. You saw a shot a minute ago there from the Goodyear Blimp America, by the way, overhead. Pilot Captain John Moran, our cameraman Bill Sullivan. And the America, we're told, is going to be with us in Atlanta at the PGA, too. There's a the, there's the look at the shot. <laughs> That's beautiful. You can sure see those white faces of Marion from up there, can't you? You don't want to count all 126. Try it. Coming into 18 there. All right, George. Downhill, really fast. Really slick here. Look at that. Ah, he's, uh, mm. Well, you concentrate so much now on the speed. And a little bit to the right also. <clears throat> now Bill Rogers. He has put the ball into the right rough here, and he's in the... He's, he's not in the real heavy stuff, but the grass is kind of leaning sideways, and it, it could tangle around the club a little bit. He, it's not too bad a lie, but he's got 190 yards to the hole uphill. He's going to have to hit a good shot, I think, to get it on the green. That was Ed Sneed out on the fairway. Ed, one of the finest professional golfers in the country himself, working with us today. He's got good, solid club head on it. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 it yep, might yep. be through Almost. the green, Ed. It's certainly going to be in the back fringe. Okay, well, he'll be happy with that. I That's think. not a bad shot from there. He's in the back fringe, uh, but in a little bit of a bad break. He rolled right against the tall part of the fringe there. This is the hole, by the way, where David Graham got into the Scotch broom, another of the many varieties of vegetation that grows in the bunkers here, purposely. Played him around. There it is, right in the to top the middle. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm sorry, Dave. I just right. wanted to point that out. I was in there the other day myself. In the scotch room? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you want to be expert on all phases okay. of the game. Yep. Okay. Could take the lead. Yep. We would also put him two under for the day to give you an idea of how well he's playing. Was that good? And they always hear go by that extra two, three, four, five, six inches that makes the next one a little tougher than you'd think it would be. See, that it almost looked like it was going to stop right by the hole, but no. And you've got to be careful with the next one. The greens are very true. If you happen to start one of them offline, there's nothing to kick it back online or push it back online. If you're going to have that putt that distance, you 
rather be coming up at the hole as he is, though, wouldn't you, rather than down at it? I like David's putt here better than the one that George has, especially yeah. this putt, if it moves at all, moves from right to left, which for a right-hander is generally the simplest putt to make. While George's is going to move the other way, from left to right. Generally, right-handers have a little tougher time with that putt because you push your blade toward the hole, and if you miss it, miss it to the right. Jack Nicholas on the 15th tee, 378 yard, par four. It's a hole that you don't need to use a driver on, especially with the out of bounds on the left. Yeah. Yeah. Seldom have we seen so many irons used off tee. Bill Fleming. Uh, Jim, let me just report that ball's in good, good shape. Now Burns, George Burns for the par. This is kind of slick, remember? Okay. Good putt. So they remain tied for the lead. George Burns and David Graham. We'll be back at Marriott. Well, we're entering the final six holes of this 81st U.S. Open Championship, and it's getting very tight indeed. Burns and Graham, five under par. Bill Rogers, four under. Nicholas Thorpe, Crenshaw, and Cook all there. Nicholas has done it so many times before. This young man has yet... Well, he did win the World Match Play Championship at Wentworth Golf Club, just outside London, a couple of years ago, and played very well indeed. But he's not won one of the classic major events as we look at David Graham with a pitching wedge at the 13th hole. And the hole has played very easy today, Peter. More than 20 birdies on this hole today. 20 birdies. Downwind. And this could be another birdie. Oh, a little unlucky. Just flirted with the edge of the green and then backed up five or six feet. But Graham with a very good chance for a birdie, too. Bill Rogers. Third shot. Fourteenth. Pretty well. Now George Burns at the 13th, also a pitching wedge. Okay. Course playing very much more difficult today. Only five players out of 60 so far have broken par. Par here is 70. Yesterday, 60 players, well, 13 had broken par. Burns still there, tied now for the lead with David Graham. Now back to Jim Thorpe at the 15th for a birdie. This to go three under. This was our first round leader. short a little quick my word he'll remember Marion for a long time he's done very well indeed whatever happens from here on <coughs> Rogers for his par Might have just sneaked away. He looks happy. He's battling away with every fiber in his body. Just a couple behind the leaders. He's battling there. He's just one now behind the leaders. Five under Burns and Graham. Four under Rogers. Two under Nicholas. And Rogers, if he can hang on, in a very good position indeed. There we are. 
Burns and Graham at five under. Rogers four, Nicholas two with Jim Thorpe, Crenshaw and young John Cook, who's now on the last hole at one under par. And so much can happen over these closing few very exciting holes here at Marion. Now the 13th green, George Burns, who's played quite a few wayward shots today, but has shown tremendous courage. Not used to being in this position, in this sort of event. Got a long putt for a two. He's holed very little today. If you're going to be a winner, you've got to pop one or two in occasionally. Is this going to be the moment for Big George? Thorpe, meanwhile, ahead. Gets his car. And remains two under. Just three holes to play. Three very difficult holes. Now Burns settles over his putt. Interesting, the caddy still holding the flag in the hole. Save three. Greens, though, now are so fast that if you don't have a favorable line, it really is quite terrifying. Well, that's a good three. Another hole safely played for Burns. There's young John Cook. Had a very good open championship indeed. One under par. And who knows what's, what lies ahead for this young man in the years ahead. Putt for three at this final hole. Only been four threes so far at this hole. Bruce Devlin, Aoki, Reed, and Rasset. Is this going to be number four? David Graham for a two at the 13th. This to take the lead. Looks good. Well, we saw John Cook and then David Graham. That really did look in the hole. But he'll have to put down a three on the card. And he will remain tied with George Burns. Mm -mm. Good putt. Still just a three. So on they go with holes running out. Burns and Graham tied. Rogers there. Nicholas hoping for a couple of putts. He's had very much an up and down round, Nicholas. But he's been there so many times before as we look at... Uh, Young John Cook just finishing off his round. One of the band of brilliant young players in the United States. Good four. A round of 70 today. Very good indeed. Very good. So with holes running out, Burns and Graham still tied for the lead. With a lot more to happen yet. David Graham, just waiting on the 14th tee. There's the hole, 414 yards, a little bit of a dogleg right to left. <laughs> and your bunkers up the right. The crowd enjoying a little David Graham remark. It's amazing how relaxed these players are. When you think of the enormous tensions, of course, not too many sports you get the spectators Although they're kept off the fairways nowadays, they're very much up and in with the play. Graham, the familiar straight arms, shoulder twitches, head tucked in the shoulders with the rounded swing. Well, 
I think he's got a few uh, home supporters there. They almost sound like a bunch of Aussies giving him a cheer. Quite a few British supporters here today. I bumped into someone today from Kendall Golf Club. Well supported here at Merion, which is nice to see also. Good shot from David Graham. Jack Nicholas. Putting for a birdie at the 15th. Could be. Now oh. Burns. George hit one straight, has he? No, this ball's in the left hand rough, uh, Peter, and very short. George seems to be seizing up a little bit, Bob. He's uh, been hitting quite a few short drives and missing the favor with the irons and woods, and there's our marker going out with the flag. What and did he hit there, Peter? Was that a wood or an iron? That was a wood. Well, that's really short. It's about 40 yards short of uh, David Graham's ball. Okay, there you see the leaders, the co-leaders, Burns and Graham. Now we're going to take a little break here. We're go going to have a special message from the USGA about their well-known associates program. Well, Rogers, bugged by a bug, waiting to hit his second shot up to the 15th green. There's the, the wicker basket perched on top of the flagpole just above the bunker. Rogers four under par, just one behind the leaders. Burns and David Graham. You got about 135 yards, 140. He's probably hitting an eight iron. Oh, super shot. That's the ball of Chichi Rodriguez near the flag and Bill Rogers just beyond and both have chances for threes. Now Burns back in the rough at the 14th. George has hardly hit the fairway today and it uh, it brings a smile to my face because I remember all the hoo-ha when Ballesteros won our Open Championship, the British Open at Royal Lytham St. Anne's and he took a terrible shellacking for missing fairways. Well, if George wins, I wonder what they'll say about his straight hitting. And he's got a very difficult shot in here. You can see how close the flag is to the bunkers. And he's got it up and over the back, and it settles again in pretty long grass, just short of that bunker. See how the ball disappears entirely. He's only four feet off the green. You can hardly see the ball. Jim Thorpe at the 16th, over the, the old quarry, though. It's his third shot. Whoopsie, touch of the Arnold Palmer's there. The flying helicopter shot, but what a third shot it is. Perhaps unlucky not to just get a little backspin. Back to David Graham. Second to the 14th. Burns is struggling, in trouble. What a time for Graham. You can see he's got a much better line in. He can hit it short, and as long as he's on line, there's no trouble for him. This one's going to be stiff. Oh, how about that? That was a beautifully poised and balanced swing. For the purists, we always talk about David Graham's swing being rounded, Tends to play from right to left, but that was quite superb. And that leaderboard may well change in the next few minutes if Graham can hole and George Burns fails to get down in two. Jim Thorpe just putting out, dropping a stroke at the 16th. One under now, just two holes to play, the long and difficult short 17th, 224 yards, and the 18th, a very fine par four of 458 yards. 
This end of the course goes through a disused old quarry, big trees, but we'll come to that in a moment as we look at Bill Rogers at the 15th with a holeable putt. Rogers, a very good putter. Straight hitter, not long. But a good, keen competitor. Rogers for a three. Rogers with this putt to make it a triple tie for the lead. We hardly touched it at all. Shows you the speed of the green. Has he got it right? He has not. He hardly touched that ball. Oh, it was a beautiful touch. Oh, And look, even though he hardly touched that ball, it's still gone 18 inches past. Good four, another par. George Burns, not far from the flag, but a very awkward chip from quite heavy grass. And he obviously saw some burrow or thought there was Borrow there. Came out of it right. Now uh, Jack Nicholas At the 16th. Took six here. In the second round. Wonderful hole. strong one feels that Nicholas realistically must at least get two birdies in the last three holes if he's going to win here's Jim Thorpe at the 17th this long short hole driving it low and hard with an iron the screen with quite a slope in the front of it and misses the green nestles in the long grass leaving him a very difficult chip shot in there's the old quarry almost looks like an old Roman camp Drifting back through the old fortifications up to the top of the hill. Burns and Graham tied to the lead. And what a swing we might see here. Because Burns has this for a four. David Graham has won perhaps half this length for a three. So there could be a two-shot swing here. On the other hand, George may hold, Graham may miss, and so nothing changes hands. Such is golf. Hardly touched it. Looks good. Brave putt. That really is a brave putt. He could be America's answers to Biosteris. Slightly different shape and hair colouring, but game much the same. Well done, George, but still David Graham has a putt to take the lead. And with not too many holes to go, that wouldn't be a bad thing to do. Let's have a look at this again. Just look, you see the putter is fairly high off. The, it just touches it, pulls it away left. Look at it, row, 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 and go on. In she goes. Great four. But now David Graham has this one for a three. And you must feel that if he's, uh, if he's going to win, he's certainly got to hold this. This for David Graham to take the lead.
Doesn't look much, does it? You've seen them hold a million times before. You just line the putter up, draw it back slowly. The greens are perfect. Just roll it in, just knock it in. Nothing to it. Same routine. He's practiced this a thousand times. And all that practice has paid off. The new leader, David Graham. The Australian leads the 81st Open Championship by one stroke with holes running out. Very quickly indeed, but George Burns still battling away very bravely. Bill Rogers there. Nicholas still trying hard, but it looks like a three-man battle now. And here's one of those men, Bill Rogers. 16th tee. And that's not the place to be at the 16th. Jim Thorpe at the 17th trying to be too delicate and now the nerves are becoming very raw and ragged indeed. and much can happen over these last three holes. We listened to an interview with Jack Nicholas the other day, and he was saying that he didn't know of any other course where shots could change hands quite as quickly as here at Merion. You can lose two and three strokes on one hole in just a moment or two. 15th now for David Graham. Again, you feel that if he could finish with pars from here on, that might well be good enough, who knows? There you see it, bunkers down the right. Only 378 yards. One of the many holes here at Merion, under 400 yards in length. Graham continuing to play an iron from the tee for position. Putting his faith in the one iron. George has driven in the left-hand rough no fewer than six times in this round and is out of bounds left on this hole. And he's got the old one iron out. Now, if ever George needed a few straight hits, they are now. Beautiful. Yeah, George! All right, George! This looks like a good shot here. Yeah, good position. Nicholas taking a long time. No man knows the game better than Jack Nicholas. He's on the 16th. He's got a putt, not a short one. But he must know that, uh, well, if he could just finish 3-2-3, three, three, asking a lot. Look at the length of this putt. But he's hold longer ones than this in his day. Miss Shorter. Nicholas for a three at the 16th. Not going to turn. A good putt. But that's a four for Nicholas, so he's only got two holes to go. David Graham leads the championship now by one. Burns and Rogers chasing on. Bill Rogers has an extremely difficult shot on the par 4 16th. In heavy rough, he's got to go across the quarry, up to the green. Can he make it? Uh, don't. Ooh, is he going in the trees so. where Jack Nicholas was the other day? Maybe Ed Sneed could Ed see. Ed Sneed, can you get any idea yet where that ball went? Ed's with the group. He must be blocked. 
his signal made. Jim, I'm down here on 16. I can't tell exactly where his ball ended up from where I'm standing. He had a pretty heavy lie, but I think it was good enough. I think he made the right decision. I think he had to try to go for the green. Right. Did it go right or left? Or he, went, he went to the right, but I'm not sure. I don't think he's in the trees, but I, I'm not sure. I'm going to get up there and take a look at it. Okay, yeah. thanks. David Graham with his second shot now. The leader in this championship. 15th hole. 15th hole. Uphill shot. Good shot, baby. We're told that Phil Rogers is not in the trees. He's in the right rough short of the green. Down in there somewhere, he still could have a big problem, but it's neat going to get up there and uh, give us an exact idea of the lie of the ball. Jack Nicholas hit one flat right here the other day into the trees, eventually made six. Had he not but he made four, he'd be a lot closer to the lead right now, but you could say that about so many holes. George Burns now one stroke behind. Graham, by the way, is leading this tournament for the first time. He hung in there. He has been steady, rock steady all the way. And finally, things go have gone his way, at least for this moment. Here's a beautiful shot here. Yes, indeed. Both about the same distance, Rossi. Maybe George is a little farther away. What a head-to-head -head battle this has been. Man against man. The big Brooklyn-born David George Burns, Australian-born David Graham. Now, Jack Nicholas on 70, 224 yards, but it's downhill off the rock face of the old quarry. They have arrived at the point on this golf course where sometimes you might wish you had a pick and shovel in your bag instead of two wedges. Sometimes you need it. Yeah. But, oh. Left rough, Jim. Yeah, that's just about where Jim Thorpe was and made four from there. Pretty heavy. Yep. Yep. Okay, so Nicholas with a problem, his hopes fading extremely fast right now. There is the, the top of the ball you can see down in the rough. But Jack is four strokes behind. It would take a disaster to happen to David Graham and Burns. Something happened to Bill Rogers so that Nicholas can only hope at this point. Does not seem to be able to help himself enough as he goes down the stairway, down the face of the quarry. Now Rogers, now he's gotten up to the ball. Ed, uh, did you have a look at it? Ed Sneed? Yes, I did, Jim. His ball is not too bad. He's got uh, a little bit of green to work with, maybe 20, 25 feet of green. He's going to have to throw it up pretty high and soft, though, to keep it uh, close to the hole. Well, it, does the lie allow him to do that, Ed? Well, it, it's not too bad, David. It's, it's not going to be the kind of shot that he can hit uh, with a real firm stroke. He's, he's going to have to lob it, and he's going to have to land it just on the green, I think, to get it real close. I think he's a pretty good player when he when he comes down to playing this shot. He he cuts the ball normally with his normal golf swing, and I think this this type of shot lends it to that sort of stroke. I think he can hold the blade open well as he goes through the ball, and I think he if anyone can execute the shot well, he can. That's well, a, he did. Good shot. Yep. You know he won more money last year than anybody has ever won without winning a tournament in that year. Two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. This year he has won a tournament, the well-respected Heritage Classic. On a good golf course? Yep. Bill Rogers, although you think of him as Texas, well, he was born in Waco, then his family moved to Alabama, and then he got over to Texarkana, but he's also lived in places overseas, Morocco, for example, because his dad was a lieutenant colonel in the Army, so he's a well-traveled young man. His dad was a good player, too. He is a good player. Uh, yeah, Bill says he still is pretty good. There it is, Graham by one over Burns, by two over Rogers, and the rest. Nicholas just seems to always be a factor. At least he's always in the area. Right until the end. If you stub your toe. <laughs> We're told that uh, Ben Crenshaw's tee shot at 15 hit a spectator back there, and that slowed that pairing down of Crenshaw and Jim Thorpe. Uh, an ambulance was called, and that's the only word we have about that incident so far. Correction on that was his second shot on 15. Now here's Jim Thorpe with his second shot on 18, a long finishing hole here. 458 yards. And he's gone left and just in short rough, just short of the green. On your right as you look at the screen, but the golfer's left. He'll, he'll, have, he'll have a reasonable pitch coming up. Well, he may be a little disappointed in his finish, but he's had a fine tournament. He certainly has. 
Jim Thorpe at even par for the tournament right now in a tie with a lot of people with Ben Crenshaw, Lon Hinkle, John Schroeder, Chichi Rodriguez, Sammy Rachels, and Frank Connor, all of them tied at even par. So very important for him to make his par here. He'll drop well down on the money distribution. Speaking of important, <laughs> this six or eight footer that Bill has at this point may be the biggest putt he's ever had to make. Now Burns, George Burns with a birdie effort. One 15, one hole behind Bill Rogers. And George's putt is really fast going down the hill. Bill's to the left side is not quite as fast. Left. Oh, he's left a little something coming back. So. This should swing quite a bit from right to left with George here. No. So Bill Rogers is beginning to fade, but not George Burns. Go Look ahead. at it go by. Yeah. Look how fast it. He's got a tough one. It's part of the cruel things that happen to you in an open. You hit a very good shot. You're just on the wrong side of the flag to take a run at it. You hit what appears to be about a foot from the hole, one that's going in the center of the hole. Not enough speed to hold the line. And now here is Jim Thorpe getting an ovation at the 18th green that he never expected when he came here this week. He has tried to qualify for the U.S. Open seven or eight times. This is the first time that he's even made it to the tournament. One of the lesser known players on the tour receive an ovation at the U.S. Open. It's something to remember for a lifetime. That's great. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, that is. 66 the first day, 73 the second, then back with an even par 70. Oh, he loves it. You have to. Sop it, <laughs> sop it up, Jim. And today he's just one over par. Now David Graham, the leader, with a chance to go two ahead. And give himself at least two ahead, because George has about a three-footer there. Rogers made a bogey up ahead, so Rogers drops down to three under par. Watch this go from right to left now. We'll just see how hard David has and, to hit it. And he saw Burns putt from almost the same angle. Made it. Oh, that could be it. I'm not saying that is it. Not with 16, 17, 18 to go, but three pars should do it now for David Graham of Australia. Three pars would be it. Yeah. <laughs> now he got to make them. Well, Burns has got to make his putt now to stay two behind. And then, of course, if Graham had three pars, Burns would need two birdies. And that's not likely. Another look at this most important putt. David has played so well today. Well, he's now three under par for the day. Pars in for 67. Which would tie the low round of the day. Yep. Rattled both sides of the cup as it went in. Marvelous putt. George Burns made his par. So David Graham now leads by two, is three under for the day. George Burns is two over for the day and five under for the championship. And Rogers' hopes are just about over as far as winning is concerned, as is the case for Jack Nicholas, who bogeyed 17. John Cook is already in, of course, at one under. Chichi Rodriguez at one under has had a marvelous U.S. Open. Now Jim Ford with his third shot on the par four 18th hole. Oh, he's left it way short, way short, as he did on 17 from the rough. Yeah. We don't know what kind of lie he had there nope. for sure, Jim. And once you get over the middle of the part of that green, it gets very quick back where the flag is. The ninth of 12 children of a greenkeeper at a small country club in Roxborough, North Carolina. Now the leader on the 17th the 16th hole, the 430-yard hole, the first time he will encounter the quarry. Now, you hit your tee shot, hopefully, obviously, into that fairway area. Then you must go over the quarry through an alley between two little forests of trees. That's why it's so important to hit the fairway. You saw Bill Rogers miss it. He takes the gamble. 
then made a bogey. Another hard part about this, you've got to pick a line. You can't see the landing area where your ball's gonna come down. I always found that to be, it was always a little off balance when I'm, I can't see where the ball's gonna come down. Feel like you wanna go left, and actually you've gotta shoot out a little bit to the right and then up over the quarry onto the green. What character this hole has, what <laughs> definition? Hugh Wilson did some job. Hugh Wilson, the man who designed this course, not a professional architect, a member of Marion who designed only two full courses, this one and nearby Cobbs Creek, a municipal course. Straight. But also the last few holes of Pine Valley. Let's see. Rossi. That is absolutely perfect. Dead, solid, perfect. You can see, there, there it is. Yep. The quarry in between and the bunkers and the trees on the right. That's the problem we'll have next. Jim Thorpe now with a long putt for a par four on watch, 18. Watch this, Jim, as it gets by the hole, how fast it is. Mm. Well, if he makes that, it'll be a bogey five and a round of 72. A marvelous U.S. Open for Jim Thorpe. George Burns, two shots behind. Just don't panic. A lot of golf left. The capriciousness of his tee shots has finally caught up with him. Most important to be straight here, as Dave said. Bob? Perfect. Go oh, yeah. ahead. Right yep. And again, a look at what he faces there. You know, with the pin tucked away to the right, you don't want to be too far on the right side of that fairway, Dave, huh? Well, I think at this point, you just want to be in that fairway. Jack Nicholas on the 18th tee, hitting out of a tunnel of trees again on this one, over the quarry. He's been playing this to the right side of the fairway through the tournament, but you don't get too far right or you hit the trees. Well, that's left today, though. Left, indeed. And down into the rough. It better not run too far. There's out of bounds down there. But I think it has, it has pulled up all right. There it is. There it is. Down under the hard pan. Still rolling. Still moving. Look at the people backing up with the golf ball. Ben Crenshaw playing with Jim Thorpe on 18. But for a bogey. Yeah. And a score of 281. Okay, one over par finish for Ben Crenshaw. Crenshaw, who had rounds of 70, 75, then 64 yesterday. And two over 72 today. Nice young man, just the first major has eluded him. Yep. It'll be very interesting to follow Jim Thorpe the rest of the professional season. You know, he lost his card once, and he's had a very tough time on the tour. He's never won, but to see what this pressure and this good play will do for his overall game. Well, it should help him. Now, just, Jim, just get this one in. Okay, Jim. All right. Jim Thorpe of Buffalo, New York, born in North Carolina, has done himself proud, and we'll be back. He holds to go, and there's George Burns, who has just lost his lead. He's been leading for so long, but now is two strokes behind David Graham. This is the 16th. George might have almost driven too far, and those trees may be blocking his view the flag is up on the right hand side very difficult shot he came over the top of it peter it's going to be way left just off the green almost level with the flag but he was just approaching this green from the most difficult of angles uh, david graham from a much better position will be hitting what sort of shot Bob? I would say this is a five or six iron, depending upon whether he wants to cut it in there or whether he's just going to hit it straight. He wants to get it back up on top. I think this is probably a five iron. Got a little right of the flag. He played it out to the right. He didn't need the bounce off the bank. He's no more than nine or ten feet from the hole. The perfect weight. And he is looking good. 
Jack Nicholas. Second shot of the 18th. And everything. Pulled and, uh, his tee shot. Just talk to uh, use your tongue. He's down in the trees where the spectators have been. Now he's got to drill one low and up the hill. Now David Graham had a shot like this. And I think the first or the second round and he hit a three iron which scuttled through and came up on the green. Or well, just short anyway, he escaped with a par. Jack, you see going down the shaft, he's going to hit it low and draw it round. left it out didn't get that little draw and the cries of good shot will not please Jack because he knows he hasn't got a good result he's missed it up on the right and he's in the sand we recorded just a few moments ago Bill Rogers at the 17th second shot he was faced with a very difficult little chip he had to almost miss hit it to get it close and he just stubbed his club in the ground and everyone's saying, oh, bad luck, bad luck, Bill. And then on and on and on and on. And I don't think these breeds are speedy. Nice to see competitors smiling, isn't it? Don't see it too often these days, unfortunately. You do in this game, though, and that's good. Good three for Billy. tells the story. The ovation to one of the world's greatest sports. Meanwhile, at the 16th, George Burns. Pretty good one. Just needed a touch more. But George has missed a lot of fairways and a lot of greens today, and I'm sure it's only his great courage that's kept him going, really. A lesser man could well have crumbled. He's still there, battling away. But he's got to hold his game together because Rogers is just two behind him. Jack Nicholas is up ahead at the 18th, going down into the big bunker, disappearing below ground. There he is with a long bunker shot. Probably one of the most difficult shots in golf. There they go. <laughs> up periscope. And that shows you how hey, uh, deep Marvin that bunker is. Looks much easier from that view, doesn't it? Now, Jack needs to get down in two to tie with uh, John Cook. And, of course, John Schroeder, his uh, partner for today, is also one under par. Will it go? Check too much. Graham, the championship leader, putting for a three at the 16th. Just a little tap down the hill. Oh, what a beautiful putt. It didn't go in. That would surely have sealed it. They don't come much closer than that, but that's a good four, and the, a four at the 16th here at Marion is always very exciting. George, what you'll see in a moment as we look at the leaderboard, 
if George Burns doesn't hold this putt, David Graham will have a three-stroke lead. So Burns for a four at the 16th hole. This to remain two strokes behind David Graham. Two strokes ahead of Bill Rogers. And of course, with the huge prize money at stake, apart from the honor and glory, you don't really rush these when it could cost you much gold per stroke. Five for Burns. Graham, three ahead two holes to play and it'll be interesting to see the sort of strategy David Graham employs over these final two holes the 17th hole 224 yards difficult hole Nicholas surveying his putt at the 18th this one to finish the championship at one under par if he holds it he will beat the score he did last year by but one stroke if he takes two shots he will have done exactly the same score as he did last year when he tied with Lee Trevino. Uh, 71, I mean, let's say last year. I'm getting so excited and carried away myself. Two putts for a total of 280, but he only needs... No, he doesn't. He's going to need certainly two. And Jack looks rather tired and disappointed of course not many people perhaps know he's not been the fittest of men for the last couple of months he's had uh, stomach ailments and he's not been a hundred percent fit as Jack but his tremendous determination and his enormous skill have carried him through so he has this little putt to finish his 1981 open at Merion Round in 72. Same score as 1971. 2-8-0. It wasn't good enough then, and it's not good enough now, but still it's been marvellous to see a man at his trade trying his best. Back to the leaders and the 17th, David Graham with a two-iron. left that out to the right. Uh, it's safely on. <laughs> I think the gods are with Mr. Graham a little bit. He's going down the right, it just skipped along the cut of the grass there, and again, he's dead level with a pin, only some six or seven paces from the hole. Looking like a winner. George Burns also will be using a two-iron, but first it's Bill Rogers, second to the 18th. Super shot. George Burns at the 17th. Well, it's just gone through the back of the green. So there's George Burns' ball. David Graham very close to the pin, but just off the green the other side. And the 1981 Open coming to a close. We're back again for a videotape look at John Schroeder finishing up. He was a playing partner of Jack Nicholas today. This for a par on the 18th hole, as you watch him make it, gave him a score of 32 on the back nine. Two under par, a round of 71, and gives him a tie for fourth in this championship with John Cook. Both of them have completed their rounds, and they'll tie for fourth in the U.S. Open. John Schroeder with one of the great, I suppose, the greatest tournament of his career. 
Well, certainly the greatest big tournament of yes. his career, Jim. Yeah, well, it's a great, great finish for John. No question of it. Now the gallery gathering around 18, waiting for the leaders to come in, and the man, it appears, will be David Graham. This man, George Burns, led so much of the way. Finally, his straight tee shots caught up with him. Graham, meanwhile, played so marvelously in his three under par for the day. So it was not only Burns sliding back, it was Graham charging a tough thing to do at Marion. They're on the 17th hole, the par three. This is the chip that uh, Rogers had a minute ago. Watch how Look fast at him coming down. Well past the hole unless it hits it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> he goes to five. And let us at least say this. It isn't totally over. <laughs> because there's one hole to go. Now, if David Graham makes par here, it will be two. And with the one <laughs> hole that there is to go is not only difficult, but two days in a row, David Graham has put his tee shot in the left rough. On Friday, he almost went out of bounds. Yesterday, he did it again, and as he hit the ball, he said, I did it again. And you know that that will have to be in his mind when they get there. Well, I just don't believe George here. This is a very, very tough little shot. Of course, Bill Rogers played a marvelous shot just a minute ago. And Another here's look George. at George. Watch this. Look at that. Just barely on the green. Mm. Look at him walking. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. George oh. Burns <laughs> the third. Well. And there's the live shot of him. Thinking, why did I do this on that hole? Why did I do that on the other? Well, no. he knew what he had to do at the start of the day, and he didn't. And David, of course, knew what he had to do, and he did to up to here. Put it simply, so far. It's been head to head all the way between these two. That for the three, which is what he needs. Anthony David Graham, his full name, born in Winston, Australia, 35 years ago. Now 18. Bill Rogers with this for a birdie. He hit a marvelous second shot from the top of the hill. To go four under. Okay, okay, that puts him at four under. Way to go, Billy. And matter of a minute ago, that would have put him in a tie with George Burns, but it doesn't now because Burns has birdied 17. But he will finish third in the U.S. Open unless some calamity would befall Burns on 18. But he'll finish no worse than third. Now David Graham for the three on 17. And he's down. All right, still seven under, three under on today's round, and there's one hole to go. It is 458 yards long. It is a par four. You hit over the quarry one more time out of a tunnel of trees. You might say, well, David Graham won the PGA, yeah. Well, he's won six tournaments on tour. We'll tell you more about him, but you're watching Chichi Rodriguez. For a par. For a par. What a great tournament, Cheech. Finishes at even par for this championship <laughs> at 280, the same as Jack Nicholas had a round of 72 today. Rounds of 68, 73, 67 yesterday, and 72 today. You know, he had said before today's round that if he won, he was <laughs> He would give the winner's check to Mother Teresa, the Nobel Prize winner, to help her build a leopard colony. And he meant it. Teach does a lot of very nice things. He's a good man. Got now we look. I'm sorry. We're just going to say we're looking back down, zooming down the 18th fairway. I was saying about David Graham. He's won six tournaments on tour, and he won the PGA. You, you might say, is that all? Well, he's a world golfer is what he is. Try the French Open, the Thailand Open, the Caracas Open, the Japan Open for a few. He's won all of those. Now, big, big drive for George here. If he just drill it down there, put it in a fairway, try to put some pressure on Dave. What happened? Looks all right. Let's see. Nope. nope. Oh, he hit the thing. Where I see what that hit. Uh, well, I couldn't really tell. It, it kind of caromed off. It's in the edge of the rough. Might have hit a stake or something over there, it looked like. Right. See, what is that lying in the grass there, Ross? See that yellow, is that gallery rope, is it? Uh, I, well, I'm on, the other, I'm on the other side of the fairway. Uh. Okay, it's cable, actually. Now David Graham, a few of his other titles. The Chunichi Crowns Invitational in Japan, the Piccadilly World Match Play Championship he's won, the Australian Open, 
South African PGA, New Zealand Open. Gives a lot of his credit to Norman Van Nader, the old Australian pro who's one of the world great teachers. He has to be thinking, stay away from the left this time. He's been down there twice in a row. Did you see it, Bob? Not as yet. Yeah, here it comes. It's absolutely perfect, Jim. Okay. And I just want to tell you one thing. David Graham has hit the first 17 greens, and he barely missed the first fairway, and he's hit every one since then. Uh, I want to tell you that is amazing around here. It, it's amazing around anywhere, but as you say, around Marion, it really is something. So David Graham is on the final hole, and we'll be back to welcome him in victory very shortly. On the fairway, he need only get on the green and get down, and he will become the first Australian ever to win the United States Open, ever. The first foreign golfer to win it since Tony Jacklin in 1970. Gary Player has won it. Back in 1965, he won in a playoff with an Australian, Kel Nagel. The thing must be running through David's mind right now. A couple of weeks ago, he had a, it pulled something in his rib cage and couldn't play. And now, just a few weeks later, looking at his yardage marker there, chance to win the, one of the biggest tournaments of his life. But has to there's the still a lot of things here. Now, George is not out by any means. Well, he should shot. make he a birdie. He plays in here. Well, he's got, he's got to put it on the green. If he would make a birdie and Graham would make a bogey, it would be tied. That is a fact. Oh, it's a beautiful shot. It's on the green. It's coming at the flag stick. It's too strong. It's going to go off the back. And when I say too strong, it's too strong. It'll be close for a birdie, but it's a very well hit shot. He had to go right at it. Well, that's. You don't have this many opportunities to win a U.S. Open. Now, David Graham. It is, of course, Father's Day. He is, if you're wondering, the father of two boys, age six and three, Andrew and Michael. His wife, Maureen. We're going to have a big Father's Day celebration tonight. If he can put this one on. Great drive he hit down there. Mm. It sure was. Perfect kind of shot for David Jim. Just uh, he's got a lot of room to start his hook. Right to left shot into the green. Okay. He might have caught it a shade heavy. It could could it's, be short. It might be in the hole. Oh, no, nope. oh. it's just fine, Bob. <laughs> well, that's eight, where he would 18 be. straight greens. That's not too bad. <laughs> 18 straight greens at Marion will be something you'll read about in the history of the U.S. Open. One of those little notes that we'll be making in future years. The time that David Graham hit all 18. Well, a lot of things have happened, Jim. All week, we've had uh, quite a U.S. Open. No question of it. You know, we compared this golf course, you know, to the to the old lady a while ago. And the society column might say that the the old dowager played host this weekend to Mr. George Burns III and Mr. David Graham of Australia. And it looks like it has been Mr. Graham who was most patient with the peccadillos of Marion and has won the smile of this famous place. We've had such cooperation here as we look at some scores from Bill Kent, the general chairman, and from everybody who's worked with him on this championship. Of course, also from the USGA, Will Nicholson, the president, and all the men. There's Will right now walking out of the crowd. The applause is beginning to grow. For the man who is going to win the U.S. Open of 1981, David Graham. To add to his PGA championship two years ago, he's halfway to a lifetime Grand Slam, modern Grand Slam. Jim, one thing that the cameras didn't pick up as they're watching David was George even applauded for him as he came through there. I mean, that's the sportsmanship that goes on. You, you fight as hard as you can. On the day, when the day comes that there's no sportsmanship left in golf, there'll be no sportsmanship left. Of course, George is going to try to chip his in anyhow, just to make sure David wins it fair and square. <laughs> now, remember that the U.S. Open record 
272 was set last year by Jack Nicholas as you watch still more scores. Greg Norman, the big Australian there. The other Australian, he was the Australian many people thought might win this championship, but it's turning out to be the older, more experienced, the rock steady David Graham. More scores as George Burns looks it over. Yeah, if you ever looked one over. That's right. His former champion, Hale Irwin, on your scoreboard. Jim Simons, who gave a great run at this championship here 10 years ago as an amateur. Oh, Joe right. Rassett, the only amateur to play the whole 72 holes. That's Dave Barr, yes, not our man. He's <laughs> Canadian. Yes. Okay, George. It's for Irene and the two ladies that are your daughters. Give us one little thrill here. A couple of dads playing. They let him out to play golf because it's Father's Day. But to finish second. solo second ahead of Bill Rogers. By the way, there is prize money. We haven't mentioned it for two days because somehow it just doesn't occur to you when you're talking about the U.S. Open. The winning of it is almost everything. But David Graham will win $55,000, putting him just under the million dollar mark for his career. And if he makes this, he will share the all time U.S. record for 72 holes with Jack Nicklaus. I thought earlier in the week that the scores may be a little low. I thought 278 would be a marvelous score, and certainly it would be, but David with his play today and George with his play over the four days also, Bill Rogers, uh, 276. It's only been two lower scores than that. Uh, and, or mm -hmm. Actually, four lower scores than that in the history of the U.S. Open. They were the only three to finish better than 279. Okay, would be a nice way to wrap it up. We might have made it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have come any closer. I think you can two putt from there, David, my boy, man, left. <laughs> That's great. Look at him. All right, come on. Should come in at oh. seven under, a round of 67, and that is a winning, aggressive round of golf. He didn't just play it safe in any way. You can't do that here. Can't play it safe anywhere. I mean, yeah. You just can't get that big lead when you have this much golf course waiting for you. George. Now that means he drops into a tie with Bill Rogers for second place. George Burns with a bogey five. Ties for second in the United States Open. In a way, I'm not... Congratulations to him. Yes, it, it's fine. In a way, I'm not surprised that, that he missed that because your concentration after you fought all this way just don't take enough time there. I'm glad to see George playing well. He's had uh, kind of a tough year so far. Maybe this will get him back going for the rest of the year. This for 67. And 273. Way so go, ends Dave. the Philadelphia story for 1981. David Graham is the champion golfer of the United States at age 35. Being congratulated by USGA officials on his way to the scoring tent, where it'll take him a while to check that over. He's responsible for it. Uh, Okay, there's your Father's Day picture. That's right. Very pleasant man. Has a good deal of style of his own. An elegant manner on the fairways. Club designer. Very good club designer. And there is the scene. Again, the final scores in the 1981 U.S. Open. Graham the winner, 
Burns and Rogers tying for second place. Then John Cook, John Schroeder, Jack Nicholas, and Chi Chi Rodriguez. Once again, the 1981 U.S. Open champion is David Graham. Blimp provided by Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through it. A promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.